all of you honorable uh, vice chancellor indira gandhi national open university professor nageshwar rao ji chairperson of this breakout session breakout group number 3 and as it has already been uh, mentioned that the social media team to please put people on mute whenever uh, uh, there will be need so uh, we can start because we are going on live uh, we are going on tv and on social media also so if people in between talk so it will be embarrassing uh, thank you very much uh, thanks to diet le please keep yourself mute diet ladakh uh, yeah uh, so as all of us we know this is the breakout group number 3 and uh, in this group particularly the theme will be widening reach of one class one channel reaching quality digital education to farthest corner this will be the uh, theme and we have uh, professor nageshwar rao ji a chairperson of this particular session uh, who is vice chancellor indira gandhi national open university and we have also the co chair dr tp singh uh, who is the director general Uh, bhaskar acharya institute for space application and geoinformatics under ministry of electronics and it government of india and we have uh, uh, four panelists uh, in this particular session uh, will be uh, having uh, mr murali dharan who is chairman of uh, uh, tmi and uh, uh, also uh, we have dr ts joshi Uh, who is the director of uh, Gujarat Council of Educational Research and Training (GCRT), popularly uh, known as? And uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Venkat Rangan, uh, who is the Vice Chancellor of uh, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitham. Uh, so he will he will also be a, a panelist in this session. And we have uh, uh, H. Raipa Ji, uh, who is the director. satellite communication indian space research or organization uh, isro uh, ministry of uh, defense so and also we have uh, invited around uh, uh, a dozens or more uh, experts in the area who have been working with the permission of the chair and co chair i would like to read their uh, names we have esteemed the professor jp nadda ji director cc uh we have dr rajiv kumar singh director academic nios um and uh, we have uh, dr sk mahapatra director empc igno we have professor uma kanjilal ji um pro, uh, pro vice, uh, vice chancellor uh, igno and uh, also we have uh, dr viswajit bhos um uh, who is from rotary india and uh, we have mr ajiz gupta co founder rocket learning and we have uh, uh, madam aradhana sukla ji secretary education government of uh, uh, uttar pradesh uh, we have sri anwar sadat ji ceo kite government of uh, kerala we have dr nirada devi crt uh, government of assam and uh, we have dr radha reddy director sit uh, hyderabad telangana and uh, we have uh, um, dr viswajit saha director vocational education cbse we have professor rajesh t khambayat joint director pandit sundarlal sharma central institute of vocational education ncert and we have uh, mr balakrishna ayar reliance jio uh, he is the vice chairman and uh, we have professor uh, veena pandita ji uh, director ncert jammu and kashmir so the, these uh, uh, members basically they will be after the panel presentation these members will be helping us to discuss on the theme and uh, various issues so that we uh, cross the down and uh, pinpoint the issues which is to be taken forward uh, as a recommendation to government of india back with these words i have couple of slides uh, uh, to show to give a backdrop so uh, let me uh, show the slide is it visible mm. thank you very much sir and uh, if i uh, take you through uh, the slide 
basically all of us we know that the um, honorable pm addressed the, the whole uh, gathering all the seven uh, breakout groups and the chairpersons and uh, uh, all the uh, panelists and uh, we are organizing this program as uh, part of the atmanirbhar uh, bharat uh, during the amrit mahotsav and the focus is on digital education and dynamic skilling and uh, this breakout group number uh, Uh, three, uh, we will be deliberating mainly on one class, one class, one channel, uh, and especially how twelve uh, channel and its expansion to two hundred channels, and through these two hundred channels, how we can uh, reach out through quality digital education to farthest corner of the country. Because all of us we know that India is a diverse country, linguistically also, because uh, geographically as well. linguistically we have five distinct language families and more than 1700 indian languages starting from aryan dravidian austroasiatic tibeto-burman and andamanese language families so having digital content in these languages for 26 crore school children for 15 lakh schools and for 85 lakh teachers including for the higher education institutions is the concern so the theme uh, of this uh, breakout group session uh, is like this and since it is organized as a part of implementation of the budget announcement 2022 we'll be discussing these two hours uh, on this particular issue i must uh, uh, mention uh, further that this one class one channel was introduced um, by government of india in the last year's uh, budget announcement and on may 20 uh, 2020 uh, this was uh, announced by honorable finance minister and taking cue from there there was a lot of preparation through bisag isro uh, and uh, even doordarshan ministry of it ncert and uh, the whole education department nios cbse and many other partners they joined together including the rotary international joined together and reliance jio and uh, the channels were launched on 1st september and uh, uh, then we completed one year on 21st uh, 1st september 2021 and again in this year the budget announcement on 1st february so it has been envisioned that uh, uh, there will be expansion of these 12 channels to 200 channels so that the states across the country can get opportunity to develop regional language content and use that for teaching learning purposes for school education sector through uh, television network and uh, as a part of this initiative around 2600 videos were developed in english and hindi for all the 12 channels and uh, 2850 live shows were organized uh, and also uh, indian sign language contents were developed for the first time in collaboration with recording the, in progress uh, in collaboration with the um, indian sign language uh, institute for research and training uh, under Min ministry of social justice and empowerment and in nearly 1600 videos uh, plus have been developed and also telecast on these channels for children with special needs debra and uh, we have also around 5943 contents reviewed from different organizations including nios navodaya vidyalay samiti cbse and uh, reliance uh, particularly rotary uh, india uh, literacy mission uh, they are contents and these are some of the variety of uh, contents clippings i am not showing uh, since it will be taking some time um, for that and uh, also besides that there is a lot of impact factor on these uh, programs even we have launched one interactive voice response system for receiving calls from the stakeholders on 24 by 7 and uh, also these 12 channels are simulcast on jio tv mobile app and there are 85 lakh people watching um, plus 85 lakh plus people those who are watching uh, these channels through jio tv mobile app and we have so far received around 44000 calls and uh, nearly 800 plus emails from different stakeholders as feedback also and uh, these are some of the feedback from stakeholders again i will not be showing clippings are there there is a school going child who has given a feedback and a teacher 
maybe sometime if it uh, permit i will be uh, showing so uh, with these words once uh, again i welcome all of you and uh, uh, i uh, welcome honorable uh, vice chancellor igno and chairperson of this session uh, to kindly address the gathering and uh, provide his uh, uh, opening remark so that we can go forward uh, with this particular session so uh, over to professor uh, nageshwar rao ji sir good noon to all of you uh, dr tp singh my co chair director general and the panelists the murli dharan ji joshi ji venkat rajan ji and other experts who will be helping us in this breakout session uh we have listened to honorable prime minister the way he has showed us the path to move ahead is clear and we all have to work hard to get it done at the earliest amrendra behra ji has made a brief presentation about the existing channel framework uh and what the finance minister has done has made the presentation in in her current budget speech the number of channels they have gone up from 12 to 200 we all have to look into it to see that how we can transform our education system for these young children so that the der can be i have prepared a brief presentation on ppt of course most of the facts which have been presented by behra they are almost the same but even then i will quickly go through some of the issues some of the facts which are related to these three channels because igno is also having one channel jan darshan which is our own channel plus we are also running four swayam prabha channel and we are trying to reach to almost all corners of the country recently on june 6 2022 we have gone for teaching all my graduation subjects in 13 mother tongues and by this time around 200 sessions we could conduct and around for each of these languages 15 sessions they were conducted it was very encouraging to see the response of the learners because if a learner can get the contents especially the teaching learning process in mother tongue the results will be much much better and that gives us lot of encouragement and now this particular initiative of the ministry the government of india to reach all the young learners from class 1 to class 12 it will be a miracle for the country as a whole and you all have to try your best to achieve the targeted goal which is meant for all of us my brief presentation is as follows uh this is what the pm e vidya comprehensive initiative called pm e vidya is launched which unifies all efforts relating to digital online education and this will benefit nearly 25 crore school going children across the country a big number because most of the countries they don't have that much of population with them then it was launched in may 20 based on the principle of one class one channel it airs educational content related to the respective classes useful for the learners who are in remote areas where stable internet is not available telecos huh? 
Okay. It was launched on May 20, and the principle was the same as we are following right now. One class, one channel. And educational content relating to the respective classes, they are being aired. The people who can't reach to big cities, where internal facility, internet facilities are also not available, they can have this facility at their home. Curriculum-based educational contents developed by NCRT. Video contents are at present only in Hindi and English. This will benefit more than 25 lower school-going children. So I am online courses in MOOC format for school and higher education. So that is what we have to visualize also for this school going children. Now the finance minister has made the announcement. And this is a big announcement for all of us, especially this COVID-19 and our access to the channels. Because earlier we used to have one channel, two channels, three channels, four channels. Only two years back, we have got 12 channels. Now the number has gone to 200, 200 TV channels, for which we must be thankful to Murli Sri T.P. Singhji, Director General, who is providing all sort of infrastructure for this purpose. Now, these were the earlier channels, 12 DTH TV channels, they were available. And they, they are for each of these classes. Now we have to distribute these 200 channels differently. Earlier, for class 1 to 10, two hours telecast schedule was there, including recorded as well as live, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and again repeat telecast throughout the day. For class 11 and 12, three hours telecast, including recorded and the archived program, recorded and live program from 9 to 12 with a repeat telecast throughout the whole day. The similar sort of exercise, or we have to make the changes for the future. Then proposed expansion of the e Vidya initiative 200 channels. Now, this will not be the main teaching, it will be the supplementary teaching because gone are the days when only uh, we used to get the teaching at the school itself. Now we are getting the environmental issue from the surrounding area though. So, this particular uh, initiative is going to help us in uh, adding value to our teaching learning process. Reaching the learners at the doorstep, still at their home, they can have it at any point of time. If they could not be present from 9 to 11 or 9 to 12, they can have it in the repeat telecast also. Facilitating children who are living in the rural areas and from the deprived and weaker sections of society. Or this COVID pandemic, it has affected all of us. How to uh, cover up that gap that is also helpful to this initiative. Now, the whole country, uh, these 200 channels will be divided into uh, six zones, Central, North, South, East, West, and Northeast. 28 states and eight union territories are there, all will be represented. Then there will be national boards, central boards, and major state boards of education. And our objective is to have this teaching in all the 22 scheduled languages. The distribution plan is like that, 192 channels to be distributed among six zones, with central zone for NCRT and 15 states, and five other zones, clustering of states united territories, they will be for other channels. Now, language will be as per the zonal requirement. Emphasis will be on teaching in mother tongue. Today is the Matra Bhasha, International Matra Bhasha Day, and we all are thinking about the mother tongue. So this is a great, a gift to the nation by the government of India, by our Honorable Prime Minister, and by our Honorable Finance Minister. Eight channels for the purpose of coaching also, coaching for competitive examinations, IITs, NITIs, NEET. And again, these coachings, it will be in the local language, the mother tongues, 12, 13 local languages. The central state board curriculum based sessions. Uh, then initially at least two hours of live and two hours of recording to run for class one and class class one to ten and three hours again the same process which we were earlier having for the 12 channels class schedule it will be synchronized with the channel sessions because it, should, it will not be the same time then content needs to be rich in multimedia and animations to be used appropriately already we have got a very good structure we are using the animation we are 
having the variations with respect to each class, but still more researches are required to make it much more richer in terms of content because the people they would like to see the movies in a better way. Children also they would like to see the uh, animated things, animated contents, and uh, for a longer duration. The same sort of animation we can add it uh, in our educational content, so that will be much more effective in terms of teaching learning process. The sessions need will be made interactive and two-way interaction built in through text chats also. Then the challenges, huge volume of content videos to run these 200 channels. It is required that too in different languages also. Availability of trained teachers for developing multimedia content. Now we have to see that the same uh, teachers who are teaching these subjects in their schools, if they are being tapped for the purpose, then they can understand the uh, context as well as the learner's mindset to uh, look at those contents in a better way. Infrastructure is also required for developing and delivering recorded and the sessions require augmented augmentations also, because we, we are having very limited infrastructure right at this point of time, but need, this needs to be strengthened. Fortunately, TPCG is present over here. We should not worry about that. Uh, general tendencies to have talking heads, lectures, or emulation of this has to be avoided by focusing on engaging a uh, multi rich content based on sound in instructional uh, design principles. So, this is to be uh, avoided. Then, class specific pedagogical requirements for class one students, they require different pedagogy. For class five students, they want because as per the age, as per their learning uh, level, we have to see that how the pedagogical needs there to be changed. Then demo, field shorts, exemplars, they all are to be added. Video may be in storytelling mode also, especially at the lower level classes. Video lessons will lead to both complement and supplement regular classroom teaching and learning. Then uh, making available videos in local languages is important and therefore strategy for Artificial intelligence based approach to speech translation is required because we have to do it fast. We can't prepare the right script, written script, and then we go for the preparation of this. Then we have to use the AI based speech to speech translation mode. Massive capacity building programs for teachers because teachers they have to be mentally prepared. He may be a good teacher in a class, but now he has to face the video. So, for that also, the persons they need to be uh, provided appropriate training. Institutional infrastructure will need to be upgraded for large scale for recording videos and live sessions because we have to look at the uh, uh, mother tongue also, large scale awareness campaign because we, the awareness is much more important. We are providing all these facilities, but the learners, they are to be made aware of that. The reach to the learners through proper propagation is much more important. So from 12 to 200, that is a big number. We have to say to all states, all union territories, and in all the languages, the material will be made available. The available archived content need to be translated into 22 scheduled languages of the earliest. Live sessions will need to be planned to optimize the slots to cover different languages. For maximizing the reach and effective delivery, school calendar, class timetable across school in the country will need to be synchronized with the channel schedule. The teachers are to be trained as I already told you in the beginning itself. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me patience. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for giving an uh, overview uh, on the one class, one channel uh, program, particularly the budget announcement uh, which has been done and how it can be taken forward across the country through participation of states and uh, other central organizations and how channel distribution can be done and how content in multiple Indian languages are crucial and how multiple partnership among uh, organizations, institutions and individuals are crucial. Uh, definitely this will provide ample scope for discussion on each of the issues. So uh, once again, thank you very much, sir. With these words, now I invite uh, uh, Dr. T.P. Singh Ji, uh, Director General, BISAC, uh, Gandhi Nagar, which is under Ministry of 
electronics and it government of india so um, uh, i uh, think you know uh, formal introduction more is required for dr tp singh and uh, since he has been uh, he, uh, his team has yeah, been providing yeah. technical support for running 52 uh, channels now also and how these 200 channels will be possible through technical support that will be listening from dr tp singh ji thank you over to dr tp singh thank namaskar you. sir respected chairman sir aur sabhi mahan bhav mera kaam ye hai ki kya ye samay par 200 channel logon tak pahunch payenge agar pahunch payenge to uski taiyari kya hai aur uske targets kya hai एक तारीख को बजट में अनाउंसमेंट हुआ सेक्रेटरी एजुकेशन मैडम करवाल ने इंटर मिनिस्ट्रियल जो है मीटिंग की और उसमें जॉब असाइन हो गई अगर मैं अभी जो पहली स्लाइड दिखाऊंगा आपको ये जो प्रो, प्रोजेक्ट है इसमें एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट कंटेंट के लिए अवेयरनेस के लिए स्किल डेवलपमेंट के लिए कितने ही ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से करेंगे उसी तरह से इस चैनलों को भी लोगों तक पहुंचाने के लिए ये मल्टी मिनिस्ट्रियल और इवन सम एक्सटेंड तक स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स भी इसमें भागी भाग जरा मैं पहली स्लाइड दिखाऊंगा आपको तो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन कितने डिपार्टमेंट से कॉलोबरेट कर रहे हैं सबसे पहला कॉलोबरेशन होता है मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग से जिससे कि इनका को ब्रांडिंग होगा एज ए दूरदर्शन चैनल इससे होगा कि ये डीडी डायरेक्ट पे भी आएंगे और इसकी जितनी भी रेगुलेशन के का फ्रेमवर्क है वो पूरा हो जाएगा इससे क्या है कि चैनल ये रेगुलेशन होने के बाद में ये केबल टीवी पे भी जा सकते हैं और कोई भी प्लेटफॉर्म इसको लेकर के दूसरे प्लेटफॉर्म पर दिखा सकते तो इंफॉर्मेशन एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग ने ये पूरी तरह से तैयारी कर ली है कि जब भी हम इसके लिए तैयार होंगे इसका को ब्रांडिंग हो जाएगा एमओयू प्रसार भारती से हो जाएगा और ये रेगुलेटेड चैनल होंगे जो किसी भी प्लेटफॉर्म पर आ सकते हैं दूसरा काम है मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टेलीकम्युनिकेशन का इसके इक्विपमेंट खरीदे जाने हैं उनके लिए टेलीपोर्ट के कुछ होते हैं कुछ इसके नियम होते हैं तो उनसे हमारा संपर्क हो गया है वो हमें पूरी मदद कर रहे हैं डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्पेस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अब ये इसके लिए ट्रांसपोंडर की जरूरत होगी तभी से वो लगे हुए हैं हमारे साथ कुछ अरेंजमेंट कर दिया है कुछ कर रहे हैं जिस समय का आपने टाइम टेबल दिया है उस समय तक जरूर हो ये हो जाएगा और माइटी बाइसेक एन से इन चीजों को लोगों तक कैसे पहुंचे उसके लिए लिमिटेशन लेस एनवायरमेंट हमें प्रोवाइड किया ये सभी मिनिस्ट्री और इनके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रोएक्टिवली अगेन रिपीट प्रोएक्टिवली हमारे साथ काम कर रहे हैं और हमें गाइड भी कर रहे हैं इस तरह से मल्टी मिनिस्ट्रियल प्रोग्राम होते हुए भी इसमें कोई गैप आज की तारीख में नहीं ये कैसे आएगा यहां से चाहे तो रिकॉर्डेड हो चाहे रिमोट से कहीं से भी डायरेक्ट लाइव आ रहे हो जिसमें इंटरेक्शन भी होना है उसका पूरा डिजाइन किस तरह के इक्विपमेंट लगेंगे कहा लगेंगे कैसे आएंगे पूरा डिजाइनिंग पूरा हो गया है और इसके बाद में ये चैनल किस तरह से डीटीएच पे जाएंगे और किस तरह से ये चैनल सोशल मीडिया पे जाएंगे उसके भी साथ के साथ इक्विपमेंट लग रहे हैं नेक्स्ट कमेंट उसमें हमने क्या किया है कि चॉइस होनी चाहिए चाहे टीवी पे देखें चाहे सोशल मीडिया पे देखें ये एम पैक फोर में जाएगा और इस तरह के आजकल सेट ऑफ बॉक्स आ रहे हैं कि पेन ड्राइव में उस पर भी वो रिकॉर्डिंग करके रख सकते हैं अर्थात ये एक बार देखने के लिए नहीं है इनको बार बार देखा जा सकता है तो टेक्निकली डिजाइनिंग इनके जितने भी डिपार्टमेंट्स और मिनिस्ट्री से अप्रूवल आने हैं या रिसोर्सेज आने हैं उनका पूरी तरह से शेड्यूल के हिसाब से चीजें चल रही हैं अभी तक जैसा कि वाइस चांसलर साहब ने बताया अभी तक 51 चैनल चल रहे हैं ये कहां कहां तक पहुंचते हैं ये डीडी डायरेक्ट साढ़े तीन करोड़ के करीब है वहां तक पहुंचते हैं ये फ्री डिस्ट पे आते हैं 
ये जियो के मोबाइल पे आते हैं जिनका सब्सक्रिप्शन ही जो है पैंतीस करोड़ है और सोशल मीडिया पर साइमल्टेनियसली आते हैं यानी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन ने इसको इस तरह से डिजाइन कराया है कि कहीं पर भी किसी भी तरह से ये पहुंचना चाहिए और ज्यादातर चीजें जो है फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट होंगी यानी डिस्ट्रीवी पे भी जो आता है उसका किराया नहीं देना है वो सेट ऑफ बॉक्स पे फ्री आता है जिस तरह से आपने बताया हमने कुछ लिखा है मैं स्पोर्ट्स के बारे में जो माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी आज बोल रहे थे जब स्पोर्ट्स चैनल की बात आती है तो जनरली ये मान लिया जाता है कि जो स्पोर्ट्स होता है उसका जो टेलीकास्ट होता है वो स्पोर्ट्स चैनल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ गुजरात के स्पोर्ट्स यूनिवर्सिटी है उन्होंने स्पोर्ट्स की एजुकेशन का चैनल शुरू किया यानी अगर बॉल फेंकनी है तो कैसा करनी है और बैट को कैसे लगाना है हमारी समझ में तो नहीं आता है लेकिन इसकी पूरी फिजिक्स वो पढ़ाते हैं इसमें इस तरह से स्पोर्ट्स के चैनल के लिए भी एक एग्जाम्पल है थोड़ा सा अवेलेबल है लोग उसको आगे स्टडी करेंगे तो उसके जा भी सकते हैं जब ये डिस्कशन हो रहा था कि ये कोचिंग आमतौर से मैं शायद सही नहीं भी हूं आमतौर से कोचिंग मतलब जी नीट कैट ये कोचिंग आमतौर से मानी जाती है लेकिन जब ये अलग अलग जगह डिस्कशन हुआ है और जहां से जो बोला है मैंने उसको समराइज करने की कोशिश की यानी यूपीएससी और स्टेट पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन की क्लर्क तलाटी से लेकर के आई और उनके जो प्रोफेशनल सर्विस होते हैं उनका होना चाहिए और सिपाही से लेकर के लेफ्टिनेंट का पता होना चाहिए इस तरह से हमने अलग अलग उसमें इसको डालने की कोशिश की है ये स्लाइड हमारी नहीं है क्योंकि हम चैनल चलाते हैं बहुत से लोग यहाँ आते हैं जो भी वो कह के जाते हैं हम उसको स्लाइड के रूप में बदल देते हैं तो थोड़ा सा दिखाने के लिए जिस तरह से हमने देखा है कि जितने बच्चे यूनिवर्सिटीज में फॉरेन लैंग्वेज सीखना चाहते हैं उतने क्लास में शायद जगह नहीं होती जो कि मैंने बड़ौड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी का एक अखबार में देखा था कि लोग बाहर बैठे हैं इतने स्टूडेंट हो जाते हैं केवल केवल ये चैनल चलाने से ही हम एक बहुत ही व्यापक रूप से लोगों तक पहुंच सकते हैं ले, लेकिन ये विषय मेरा नहीं है मैं इसलिए इस स्लाइड को दिखाया कि जो लोगों ने आकर के बहुत बड़े महान भावों ने आकर के जो बोला उसको मैंने सोचा कि इस ग्रुप के सामने रख दें कि जब अपने डिस्कशन करें उसमें भी इसको ले सकते आज की तारीख में तैयारी क्या है इसको टेलीकास्ट करने के लिए या सोशल मीडिया पर पहुंचाने के लिए हमारे किस तरह से इक्विपमेंट कहां कहां है इसके लिए टेलीपोर्ट चाहिए दो एक से जिससे जाएगा और दूसरा जो इसके रिटेंडेंट होगा दोनों आज की तारीख में फुली तैयार हैं और टेली कम्युनिकेशन मिनिस्ट्री के साथ में हम संपर्क में और पूरी तरह से अवेलेबल है आज की तारीख में सिविल और इलेक्ट्रिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इसके लिए बिल्कुल अलग ये होता है तो जिस तरह के यहां तक कि इनका जो टेम्परेचर है वो 16 बिलो रखना पड़ता है इन इक्विपमेंट का उस तरह के बिल्डिंग उस तरह का एनवायरनमेंट हैज बीन ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड सो बिल्डिंग और इलेक्ट्रिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर आज अवेलेबल है इसको चलाने के जब 200 चैनल चलाएंगे तो 150 के करीब आदमी यहाँ आएंगे बैठेंगे काम करेंगे उनके लिए ऑफिस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ऑल्सो रेडी सोशल मीडिया पर डिजाइन है जो इक्विपमेंट आएंगे उनके पूरी तरह से स्पेसिफिकेशन तक बन गए हैं मेंटेनेंस जो है जैसे हम करते थे उसको ऑगमेंट ऑलमोस्ट हो चुका है कि जिस तरह से 51 चैनल का मेंटेनेंस होता था 200 चैनल प्लस आएंगे यानी 12 निकाल दीजिए तो लगभग 88 आएंगे 250 चैनल के करीब ये हो जाएंगे उसके पूरे मेंटेनेंस की ट्रेनिंग लगभग 28 फरवरी तक इसके जो इंजीनियर्स है उनकी ट्रेनिंग पूरी हो जाएगी इक्विपमेंट के लिए प्रोक्योरमेंट के लिए कमेटी बन गई है इसी वीक में मीटिंग हो जाएगी मार्च के पहले वीक में हमें उम्मीद है कि सब कुछ ठीक ठाक गया तो ये जेम पे प्रोक्योरमेंट के लिए पहुंच जाएगा सेटेलाइट बैंड विथ इसरो इज गोइंग प्रो एक्टिवली ऑल दो वी नीड दिस थिंग इन जुलाई बट वी फील बाय मे और जून दे विल मेक अवेलेबल कंटेंट तो आप लोगों से आएगा और ट्राई पार्टी जो एमओयू होगा उसकी भी पूरी अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्रसार भारती से डिस्कशन ये सब कुछ हो चुका है थोड़े सेंटेंस जो पुराने एमओयू है उसमें बदलना है यानी 
प्रोक्योरमेंट ही है जो एक्सरसाइज में जा रहा है बाकी आपकी तरफ से जो कंटेंट आएगा पूरी तरह से 200 चैनल जुलाई के महीने में अगर पहला नहीं हो प्रिक्योरमेंट में दो चार दिन दस दिन इधर हो सकता है जुलाई के महीने में इनको टेलीकास्ट करने के सोशल मीडिया पे देने के मोबाइल पे देने की पूरी तैयारी कर ली गई है थैंक यू वेरी मच सर या थैंक यू वेरी मच सिंह साहब फॉर कवरिंग द होल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ प्लानिंग Uh, procurement of the equipments and how multi stakeholders participation is required for telecast including the doordarshan bysat isro uh, and uh, the content uh, developers and uh, sharers particularly the states and central agencies for content delivery purposes and i hope for the timeline which we have the uh, first uh, july Uh, to start the telecast we will be ready for that mainly content is key because technologically as you have already explained so it will be uh, taken care of so uh, and we will even it will be done in multiple uh, modes as well so uh, with these words i uh, uh, thank you once again to the co-chair dr dp singh ji for the presentation and uh, um, i now invite the first uh, panelist with the permission of the chair and uh, co chair uh, sri uh, t murli dharan ji uh, to please uh, go ahead uh, with the presentation uh, thank you very much uh, murli dharan ji you are uh, muted you are in mute so you yeah. have to unmute yourself yeah remove yeah, and uh, can you hear me now if you want the presentation you can go ahead with uh, yeah. sharing your screen also right is my presentation visible yes yes very clear right. yeah, thank you so please. much and i want to thank the chair co chair and uh, dr bahra giving me this opportunity uh, many of you are extremely well known i think many of you don't know who i am and i think when i say something uh, i want to first establish that i have spent 30 years of time in this space and therefore i'm going to give you a few initial slides on who i am and what my company does we have been also working in this space for 30 years and then i'm going to present a few challenges and few thoughts which i think uh, we can discuss later on clearly i'm extremely impressed by what i heard so far from the vc and bera and also the co chair about the preparation for making this 200 channels a reality on july 1st we know for a fact that this government when they want to do something they will make it happen and what we have seen so far what i've heard so far is the kind of preparation and the coordination and collaboration which is happening among the government departments to make the pm dream a reality but what i'm going to speak about is very different i'm going to speak about the outcomes i'm going to speak about i am the consumer of many of the education that every one of you dole out i work in the area of two spaces one in learning sciences i also one in work in the area of employability so what i am going to say today uh, obviously i need your uh, i need your permission to speak my mind freely and in case i say something which is out of line i request you to uh, i accept i give my apologies in advance and i request you to accept it but i thought this forum is about speaking your mind uh, i hope to do that my background i passed out of iit madras 79 i am amdavad in 81 and i was law graduate recently at the last 3 years i finished my graduation i'm also an advisor to the governor of rajasthan and uh, msme in employment these two are very close to my heart i write a lot as a journalist and columnist on education and employment in hindu various local papers magazines i'm also national executive committee chair and chair telangana of fiki an industry body um, recently i've been nominated on the board of management of open university in rajasthan and that has given me a lot of insight into understanding open universities what kind of children come there what do they learn but behind all of them is my basic day job which is social entrepreneurship on a special especially serial entrepreneurship from 1991 we have ourselves more than 4000 employees 
And uh, they are basically workforce of various types, full-time gig workers, staffing employees, and so on. And I've spent 30 years trying to understand the connection between education and employment. Believe me, I still haven't understood it. I'm still trying to understand what should the education do to get aligned with employment and what should our employment do to receive the education more favorably. So all these topics will be part of my coverage. I've written two books on it. Both of them are bestsellers. They are the first in the category in India on job counseling. Uh, first, first, Your Right First Job was published uh, six years ago. And the second one was published later on. Uh, Nirmala Sitaramji actually launched the second book in Delhi. But the basic idea of each of them was one of the biggest weakness of our education system is you are preparing them for job and employability. People have no idea what is a job market, what are the jobs available, what is the nature of this job. So these two books were my small attempt to demystify job roles and the reality of the entry-level market in, in, the, in the employment market. On top of it, I have been fortunate uh, to be involved in education, especially for education for the poor. There are three types of areas where I'm actively involved. One from the year 2013, I, I am part of I am Ahmedabad alumni. We run two schools, uh, more than 800 children are there. They're very, very poor. We're a single mother where the average family income is less than 8,000, 9,000 rupees. But we provide some high quality education at a very low cost. And maybe Sometime later on, we talk about how do we use volunteering as a technology or as a methodology? How do you use technology to bring down the cost? But we do provide some high quality. Um, two years ago, last year, also most of our children 100% pass. The attendance is 98%. And we get about uh, 10, 10, 10 out of 10 for many of our children. We, we started a program recently called Mission 25, which is basically identified 25 children from class eight and we are coaching them for getting into national levels like IITs and medical schools with supporting for uh, scholarships. We recently also I got involved in a special school for physically challenged uh, and mentally challenged children. But the third one is very important. I want your special attention and I'm going to talk a lot more about it later on. Which is basically a digital school. I think after spending a lot of time trying to understand our education system, our NOS system, I feel that one of the areas which we are really missing out very, very clearly is how are we designing a learning system for a learning challenged? If a learning motivated child is there, or a parental system is strong, that's one type of education. But you will realize as I speak with data, a lot of our children are learning challenged. And the recent school dropouts, if you look at the numbers, they're very large. I'll present some data. So we are trying to build a digital school which is completely free for the poor. It will be from class five to class 10 dropouts. Women who have dropped out earlier want to come back to education. Uh, we're going to cover basically an NOS based model for class 10. And I want to share that we are now in the process of developing the content and the technology for this. And I'll share something about this, I think, which will be my contribution for this uh, seminar. Uh, we have almost in the process of raising the money from uh, CSR money. And our objective is to reach out 1 million students in cl for class 10 certification, mainly focused on school dropouts. Uh, our companies, very briefly, we are in the space of talent management, which I think is the primary objective of all education that we provide is to produce Indian talent worldwide. We, we provide Indian talent to companies in India, companies around the world, we work in multiple countries. So as I said, I'm the consumer of whatever the education system produces. We have three group companies. And what we do in digital learning, I think my focus here will be largely in digital learning because that's a space we are discussing today. We have been a pioneer in the digital learning space in one space called enterprise learning. Enterprise learning is basically where after schooling and colleges, children or people get into corporate world or employers, how do you create capacity? How do you create uh, that learning, continuous learning mindset? How do you induct people into job? This is what we do as a business for last more than uh, from 2000, uh, 2004. We do ID, we do learning content in-house, we do learning technology in-house, and we also do learning assessment. In learning, digital learning, we do a lot of blended learning models, um, especially bespoke which means primarily custom design for an end use or a particular target audience. 
we'll develop a variety of content, right, from interactive to serious gaming to mobile nuggets to e-books to scenario. So very wide variety of content development. We will talk about it today because I think television is only one form. Uh, even if you break it up or make it available in social media, it's still one form of learning. We need a lot more variety of content. And we also do in multiple languages. We have acquired the capability to deliver content in English, 14 Indian languages, and seven foreign languages. So some of this, over the last 14 years, we have been doing this, and I hope to bring some of these expertise into this group. To give you some numbers, uh, digital learning, we started in 2004. We have one of the single program where we have 1 million learners right now in a single project, on a single instance that is going to be done for Anganwadi workers. It's been a World Bank program, and it's been a very successful program. On learning technology, we have implemented Moodle, which is a very free LMS, which is used in many of the self-learning models. And we also done a lot of KM and learning portals for in various other technologies. Assessments, we have been here from 2016. Basically, the assessments are basically skill assessment and employability assessment. And some of this knowledge also I will be sharing. And all of them are pan-India, some of them are global. So I think, like Prime Minister said, we need to bring the best global technology to India right now. And we would love to have contribute in that area. In terms of learners, we have very large experience in school dropouts, like Anganwadi, seventh class pass, eighth class pass, graduates, and employees and professionals. But we also do a variety of customers. We work with corporate and CSR which is a large funding agency for scaling. We work with multilateral agencies and foundations from around the world. We work with government of India and geographies. We are in South, Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and Middle East and Africa. Now, each of them have brought a lot of insights. We have unlearned a lot from whatever we thought is working and not working. Continuously, there's been a journey of our own learning to see what works and what doesn't work in digital learning. Three good examples I've presented. One is the World Bank project for Anganwadi workers, one for GIS, which is the German um, agency. We work with the Department of Women and Child Development in Madhya Pradesh. And we also work with UNICEF on early child development and training using mobile nuggets and quizzes. Now, the point I'm making is, in my mind, digital technology has gone way, way, way beyond what we originally envisaged. Today, learning has completely changed upside down, and I'm going to show you a short video on what we have prepared for this uh, for a recent presentation, which will bring out this idea. What digital learning today, in my mind, is very, very different. Quickly, some of our customers, NASCOM, World Bank, UNICEF, uh, Islamic Bank, we work with World, WHO, we are preparing some very interesting content. Uh, we also work with uh, UNDP. So, the idea of giving all these examples was to show that some of the learning that we are presenting uh, learning models are for global audience right now. Government of India, DOPT, we are a partner, and we have worked with Aadhaar, India, uh, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing. We work with the Ministry of uh, Education, Singapore. The idea was, again, to tell you, it's not commercial. Whatever we do is not just commercial, it's not for money. We do a lot of things for social objectives, and some of these are represented here. Now, the second part is very important, and I think this is going to be also some of the theme of my discussion later on, employability. I think the Prime Minister talked about employability and livelihood. At the end of the day, whatever we give our children should make sense to them, and it can be used in real life. So when we talked about employability, the first supply, the supply-based model is what we have implemented in India significantly, government funds, skill ministries involved, it's largely supply driven. We are one of the pioneers in demand driven skilling in India. Uh, we are the first in India to talk about role-based finishing school to assess employability. We believe there's nothing called generic employability. It's always role-based. Uh, for example, any of us who are good teachers, if you're assessed as an employability for a pilot, we are unfit because we are not suitable for that role. So in my mind, employability is role-centric. Role uh, we are running uh, very, very large programs for uh, this, this uh, program which I talked about now. 300,000 rural and urban youth have been trained by us in the last 10 years. And these people have got jobs free of cost after training on employability, training dates ranging from seven days to 30 days. 
we are able to provide them jobs, get them jobs at a, above the minimum wages, and they have survived and stayed in those jobs and moved on in life. We also meet a lot of youth. I think one of the points I want to bring also, the youth of today is very different from what we visualized the youth of yesterday. The very different, and we are very fortunate to meet 250,000 youth every year in course of our work. So some of that knowledge is also going to be represented by my thoughts in this area. In terms of corporate learning, yes, ultimately corporate includes in India, for example, if we talk about 45 million people in the organized sector, the Indian private sector is the largest employer of talent coming out of universities in India. They're bigger than the government, and the government actually employment is declining, but the private sector employment is the key. And we are in both large corporate as well as MSME sector. And the last one is on CSR. We have very deep experience in understanding CSR, how CSR can be utilized, how much funds can be raised for the public good. And two examples of that is what we are putting in the bottom, IBM, Microsoft, SAP, all these clients of ours have come to us for putting in money for skill development and doing finishing schools for some of our children. Right now, we are doing about 5,000 per year. We hope to scale it up this next year to 10,000. And the last one is a large program with Ministry of Labor and, and Skill. Uh, we'll be, we have got a contract to work with Microsoft to scale about 300,000 people in IT skill, futuristic skills of tomorrow. Uh, by in this, it's launched in 2021. We are still in the process here. Some of our clients, you can see very wide variety of audience here. We also do something called employment van with government of Telangana and the police. Police program, Ministry of Home Affairs, we run a van which connects digitally unemployed youth with micro and small enterprises. So this is a digital technology. It does mapping. It registers people. It, we do job fairs. So the last one, I want to close by presenting a concept which I think is essential, whether it is the schooling or college. We need to prepare our children digitally for employment. So we are trying, we are now developing a model called digital employability centers. This will be mainly for college students before they pass out. There are four components to it. One, information on the job market. Two, what is their fitment? What kind of aptitude and personality do they have? People cannot do any job. People can do only certain type of jobs. So the third part is the personality fitment. And the third one will be an attitude test to identify the fitment to any specific role. And lastly, based on digital counseling, we'll train them on one role, which is suitable based on their personality and job market requirement, and then do digital placement. So these are four steps involved. Uh, we have already worked with Kerala government and some, uh, AP uh, government. Uh, now let's go back to the key discussion today and what are my few thoughts on um, education, I'm really talking from the standpoint of outcomes. I'm really standing from a point of looking at education from the user side. Uh, first is what's bothering me when I started researching is, I think something is seriously wrong, the current education system. We have done, I have seen you, all of you have put enormous effort, commitment, passion at the top, but is it rolling out? You at the population of 635 million people in this age group of 3 to 35, according to NSSO survey, 75th survey in 2017 18, 356 million, 174 girls out of them are out of education in the age group of 3 to 35. This is a huge number. Out of that, 261, 267 million had earlier enrolled but dropped out, which is what is scaring me most. And the third part is what I am focusing on which is 27 million children are older age children. They are not in age appropriate class. They are older children and most probably they are laggards in the current classes, right? If you look at the same data by DICE data in terms of school dropouts and college dropouts and class eight, nine and 10, which I think is our biggest concern right now. Uh, we are now looking at 16 million people in age 14 to 16. Yeah, sorry. Uh, 16 million children are dropped in the age group of 14 to 16 and 24 million in 17 18 are not in school or not in age appropriate class and 8.7 million children drop out of the class 8 and 10 now these are concerning me a lot because the problem is not teaching our children who are enrolled we are also have to worry about children who are outside the class system what are we going to do how this program that we are developing because for every child as i mentioned earlier for every child we have one child 1.28 child outside so in my mind, any solution that we build should take care of eight major challenges. 
And I think after going to IIT, IIM, and also Open Osmania University, I want to submit to this exclusive audience, uh, this uh, target group of experts. I want to present to you eight challenges, and we need to find answers to this. First of all, our education system is designed for higher education. Many of the concepts are never used in real life. Uh, okay. Sir, I request yeah. you if you can wind up in one minute because we have already exceeded yes, the time. Yeah. Thank and you, uh, I think yes. all the eight points are well taken also. It is seen visible. I don't think it is required to explain. Maybe you can point. Uh, all right. yeah. Thank you. Oh, all right. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I think that among these eight points, I want to talk about only last uh, two points. I think the promotion automatically into class eight and the huge backlog of learning due to COVID are something we need to worry about. And the attention spans are falling dramatically. I think this is something which our research also shows. Children's attention spans are falling between three to four minutes. And we need to look at how the solution that we are building. So lastly, four solutions that I want to suggest that learning challenge cannot be motivated to learn. I disagree. I think we need to, we can find new methodologies of how make out new methodologies to bring out the dropouts back into learning, provided you connect learning to earning, to connect learning to life. Those are two points. The girl child dropouts also are very high. So I think this is also well, very established. Learning laggards can also learn digitally. I believe very strongly they can. You need to put video based learning, it should be short, entertaining, or game based. And the last portion is learning challenge need personal attention. Now, this is the core of my submission today. Even though we do one class and one uh, TV, the problem is children in the classroom are not homogeneous. Each child is at a different level of learning. How are we going to provide an opportunity for a child to learn when he has already missed out because we have a cumulative learning system model? How are we going to allow the children who are laggards to learn and catch up when you're teaching the whole class as one homogeneous class units. I'll stop here. I, I want to again thank you for your time. I think some of the discussions, maybe we can take it up. Uh, thank you, um, Dr. Bera. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Murli Garanji, uh, Chairman EMI, uh, for uh, speaking out many of the issues, including the important challenges. And uh, uh, one of the uh, challenges mentioned by you is the attention span. So how television programs can catch the attention span of the children is also crucial. So programming stage need to take care of that. Besides that, uh, you also talked about employability since 200 channels will be running. So a lot of cameraman, lot of production crew, a lot of post-production people. So even instructional designer and script writers, academia will be required. So again, it will help in the job market also. So thank you very much for highlighting some of the issues. Uh, and now, uh, thank you once again. And uh, I now invite Dr. Venkat Raganji, Ranganji, uh, who is the Vice Chancellor, Amrita Vishwa Vidya uh, So over to uh, Professor Venkat Raman, Ranganji. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Behram. So I'm uh, extremely happy and thankful to Dr. Behram for giving us the opportunity to present at this distinguished panel. The Prime Minister's guidance was very enlightening, widening the reach of one class, one channel, reaching quality digital education to the farthest corner, a very timely deliberation. UNICEF highlights that schools for more than 168 million children globally have been completely closed for almost a full year. And in India here, the closure of 1.5 million schools due to the pandemic and lockdowns in just 2020 alone has impacted 247 million children enrolled in elementary and secondary schools. Nations worldwide are prioritizing the UN Sustainable Development Goals. For today's discussion, SDG 4, which focuses on an inclusive and equitable quality education for all, is very critical. In the light of the situation, widening the reach of one class, one channel, a great initiative by the Honorable Prime Minister Modi, Modi Ji, is a much needed initiative of the hour. The move to increase the number of TV channels providing education content from 12 to 200 
the number of TV channels going from 12 to 200 would give tremendous impetus to bring back the out of school students and those who were affected due to the pandemic. I'm not showing the slide because of the shortage of time. With my esteemed colleagues, I would like to share a few thoughts today. We believe that along with high quality digital content for theory, practical, laboratory experiments, to learn procedural, manipulative, and data analytics skills are also important. In other words, not just theory, but also practical and laboratory and hands on skills are extremely important to engage them and to reduce the dropouts. Thanks to the funding from the Ministry of IT <coughs> and the Ministry of Education and CIET, NCRD, we have an initiative called Online Labs short form O labs for school experiments. Here's a website which shows that it's a freely available on the internet for any time, anywhere access. We have developed <clears throat> over 170 online labs with hundreds of videos and animations and interactive simulations. <clears throat> I'm sorry. These online labs are also available in several regional languages and are getting in integrated into the Deeksha platform which is consistent with the National Education Policy 2020. They are fully aligned with the NCRD and CBSE curriculum. The impact, the outcome, as the Prime Minister emphasized, has been over 4 lakh learners in 12,000 schools spread over 21 states. 50,000 teachers have been trained. Now children studying in remote areas are also under resource who are under resource constrained environments like low bandwidth or no internet at all or not having adequate computer systems are also being addressed. <clears throat> and for them, the videos and the animations can be immediately transmitted as part of the proposed e Vidya DTH channel. Under e Vidya, with a single TV, a class of 30 or even 40 or 50 students can be reached at once and taught through high quality videos and animations. In the area of vocational skills, which is also extremely important, we have developed several tools which are aligned with the National Vocational Education Qualification Framework. The content developed as part of these programs can also be transmitted on the DTH channels as part of the Vidya. We are closely working with Dr. Behera at CIET and Dr. Sashi Kumar at CDAC Mumbai in order to make this, in order to implement all this. We have an ambitious target to build over 1,000 multilingual online labs, including emerging topics like artificial intelligence, entrepreneurship, cyber security, the Indian knowledge systems, sustainability related environmental sciences nutrition, sign language support, etc. We believe that widening the reach of the one class, one channel will become the globally the largest affordable educational te technology initiative, providing equitable quality education, benefiting crores of children and teachers. In fact, as early as in 2004, our Chancellor, Sri Mata Amritanandamai Devi Amma, started the whole satellite-based initiative for tele-education. This has, has had a very scalable, widespread outcome. In the area of digital learning, we have centers called CREATE, AVU, Virtual Labs, Amachi Labs, the Tribal Center, which have nationally pioneered pedagogical platforms. These platforms overcome geographical barriers, between exceptional teachers and aspiring students and are able to provide a personalized dashboard for highlighting learning gaps and remedies. With this, we request the continued support of the Government of India and under, under the guidance and inspiration of our Chancellor Rama, we will contribute our best towards the success of this initiative. Thank you very much, Dr. Behera. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thanks for highlighting the OLAB activities. And definitely when you are talking about uh, online laboratories, 
definitely uh, video tutorials to handle the on online laboratories is one crucial component and the tv channels really it can hook the audience if online lab activity videos are available on tv as well so i feel that it will strengthen the video programs itself so thanks a lot uh, for highlighting and definitely uh, in collaboration with sidak amrita uh, ncrt and uh, ministry of electronics and it uh, so we can take this journey forward and have more uh, virtual lab related videos for television channels as well not only for portals and apps so it will help us uh, in a uh, large way thank you very much thank you sir uh, and also thanks for highlighting the quality aspect definitely the quality cannot be compromised at any level even honorable pm also mentioned uh, while speaking so quality digital contents are key and uh, we need to have contents made by all stakeholders not as a consumer but as a prosumer both creator and the consumer of the uh, contents thank you very much uh, i once again thank dr venkat rangan ji vice chancellor amrita vishwavidyapitham for uh, a lucid presentation on the uh, issues very well sir thank you i now request uh, uh, sri h raipa ji associate director satellite communication satcom indian space resource research or research organization uh, under ministry of defense to please go ahead with the presentation because friends all of us we know uh, that uh, it is a, a collaborative effort always isro provides us satellite bandwidth and the satellite transponders for telecast vaisak again uh, comes to provide the services for technical services for telecast to uh, the 200 channels Uh, and as it is doing for 51 52 channels and uh, the other stakeholders like states utilities central organization and state organizations including scrts and other organizations in the state sits and uh, other technology institutions they provide content so it is uh, a virtually a convergence of all efforts so with these words i request sri uh, h raipa ji associate director sat commission to please go ahead with the presentation thank you uh, thank you dr behra am i audible yes sir you are loud and clear thank you uh, i will not take much time because uh, any of the points have been uh, uh, already addressed by the previous speakers and very relevant uh, points have been brought forward i am only uh, touching upon the uh, satellite uh, communication part and uh, Uh, the tele education or edusat program uh, which uh, isro implemented in the early 2000 just i'll touch upon because satellite by its nature it covers the entire geographical region of the country uniformly so that the, the signals are accessible to those who are in urban as well as semi urban or higher urban cities or even rural are extremely inaccessible places as well so based on this concept uh, isro took up uh, implementing the hsat program uh, by launching a thematic satellite in the year 2004 about uh, during that time we rolled out two kinds of networks uh, one is called receive only terminals it's nothing but the dth platform where the videos are trans uh, classes are transmitted in a video format so that uh, the uh, the classrooms particularly the Uh, primary and the secondary education uh, uh, schools uh, the classes were received through uh, televisions and uh, they were uh, under this concept and second type of connectivity was vsat based connectivity where the uh, the the medium satellite medium enabled uh, even presenting uh, live classes or virtual class uh, uh raipa ji we are unable to hear you can you think now goes down the states and you uh, yeah now place. now we can hear you we, we lost you your audio for a couple of minutes so you, if you can 
please say that for please start okay okay uh, sorry for that yes sir uh, the isro launched a, a thematic satellite called edusat in the year 2004 taking the advantage of uh, ubiquitous coverage of the satellite we conceived two kinds of uh, satellite networks one is uh, using the receive only terminal which was primarily meant for the school education where the uh, the uh, the programs or the sessions teaching sessions beamed in a video format on the broadcast mode the classes were received on the televisions so that is one type of network we called it as a receive only networks and the second one is a in interactive network where the underlying technology was vsat system where uh, all this uh, digital virtual environment was created where a teacher can write on the board write on a soft board or uh, make a ppt presentation that was received uh, through computers on the uh, receiving side particularly in the colleges it was projected on bigger screens and the student there was a capability for the students to raise their hands electronically and ask the questions this was the concept of uh, edusat networks and uh, under these uh, 82 networks were in, uh, established in almost all the states and union, uh, union territories and nearly 60000 classrooms were connected uh, uh, out of which around uh, 55000 were remote only terminals receive only terminals and remaining around 5000 were the interactive network here the it gave a lot of uh, learning of our using satellite for education purposes one is the technological aspect second one is the um, uh, the uh, techno managerial operation because the rot again uh, it's a dth platform uh, it was uh, widely accepted for schools and many of the schools had a plan uh, uh, to orient the students before starting the class what it is and giving a orientation and after the class students locally themselves clearing the doubts of the students so it became an effective model and the systems were so simple uh, they were uh, and they were widely available off the shelf because it's a generic technology whereas vsat was somewhat a, a little bit technology in, uh, intensive whereas uh, it required some kind of maintenance and all those things there were challenges of maintaining the network etc of course that time the penetration of bandwidth was uh, not so much now in the last uh, one and a half years we have seen that the penetration of uh, cellular network and broadband and accessibility to internet has uh, drastically increased but however uh, as already said uh, the reach to even remotest places is still a challenge one is the brand but second one those in some cases bandwidth is available the gadgets accessibility to the students particularly in the lower strata of the society that was a challenge now coming to the launching of uh, 200 uh, channels uh, already uh, tp sings are have has explained i am just touching upon the uh, technical uh, technical part of it uh, uh already uh, 51 channels are running through this 15 satellite which is located at 93.5 uh, again there is some audio problem from your end raipa sir uh, raipa ji can you hear us yes, yes sir Uh, Raipa ji, again there was some audio problem. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Okay. Okay. This is the uh, the concept, technical concept for uh, technological concept for the two hundred channels. Uh, so it is uh, uh, estimated that six transponders are required for accommodating two hundred channels. Already three transponders are in use, providing fifty one channels. It is estimated that. another three more channels are required and all the channels are expect we are planning to be uh, beamed using mpeg 4 technology so that it will accommodate more number of channels per transponders nearly about 30 or 33 channels per transponders so with this currently three transponders are in use two we have already identified we can make it available from april 1st or may 1st uh, and one more additional channel requirement is projected we are working on to make it available in addition to that we are working with industry 
because the DTH channel, we, we see that it is a, a, a kind of a linear uh, uh, way of uh, uh, delivering the content. Uh, as said, it is uh, students' learning ability could be different. So that, uh, uh, and this, uh, some sort of interactivity is uh, very essential to retain the attention of the students. Uh, taking this concept, we are working with the industry to use the same platform. Uh, so from the uplink station, the contents are sent to the satellite. It is received in the video mode at the school and projected to the TV. It goes on that. We are also planning to use the same channel, same set of uh, 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 this one, set of box, but to, through a USB port push the content instead of a video content, push it as a files or uh, you know, the program files or PPT files or interactive content so that it can be uh, pushed to a computer and in the last mile install a Wi-Fi so that students inside the class can they can use the handled gadgets and uh, uh, have an interactive uh, apps and all those things so that their learning ability will increase or it can be on the local computers maybe two computers or three computers or ten computers depending on the infrastructures available at the schools uh, the another advantage we see here is if we put in wi-fi even after school hours if you keep the computer on if we keep the wi-fi enabled even the students can access the wi-fi network and pull the contents to their maybe smartphones and they can view at home and uh, wherever internet is available so connect the internet connect uh, the computers to on the ground uh, based internet network so that some of the queries may be in the form of uh, some email or text or chat they can send it back to the teachers or a, a call center or whatever it is uh, there they can get their doubts clear so it involves the students more and the, it will provide for learning abilities. But the technology is not the visa technology. It will still remain as a DTA technology. So what we think is maybe we can, uh, out of two channels, we can, one or two channels can be of this type. So that pushing contents to computers at the schools will make a big difference. So in summary, of course, uh, we have seen that during the uh, COVID, uh, we have to go on a digital platform in any such scenarios. We, a country like India cannot afford to uh, disrupt the uh, education for the students. So we have to adopt the technology. We have to make the students uh, acquaintance and uh, to use the technology and keep, keep their learning going on. And of course, uh, the solution as required to be optimum use of the uh, ICT technologies for effective, efficient, at the same time, in an affordable way. And of course, when it comes to commercial, uh, the contents and all those things, we see there are many commercial initiatives, so there are so many government initiatives. So there are a wide variety of options available so that it is maybe required to take a leverage of all the things and make a, 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 a balance and mix up other things which suits the best in this medium. And of course, the tele-education platform, though it is planned for school and uh, curriculum-based education, it can also be used for non-formal education, skill development and empowerment. Uh, so DTS platform definitely helpful in a faster way out and maximum re uh, reach out. Uh, but end of the day, we also have to ensure that it, it, it it works as an end-to-end -end, uh, service delivery model. The students and schools should not have worry about too much of technology. They should get an easy access to the content. Uh, this is what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thanks for all your continued support for running the channels, uh, providing, uh, thanks to ISRO for providing the bandwidth and uh, uh, provision for the uh, channels and uh, thanks for also sharing the nitty-gritties how 
we can uh, use a multimodal approach to reach out to the stakeholders um, whether uh, using telecast through uh, network uh, including offline and online and uh, wi-fi i hope uh, this will help all our stakeholders including the states uh, to take this uh, forward so once again i thank uh, sri h raipaji uh, associate director uh, satcom isro for the presentation thank you so uh, we have the next uh, um, presentation particularly uh, by uh, uh, the director uh, gcrt uh, gandhinagar i think you can uh, see this uh, presentation and uh, dr t s joshi he is the director gujarat council of educational research and training and they are mainly responsible uh, for using the vaisak bande gujarat channels for educational purposes in school education sector so let us uh, watch his uh, views thank you namaste respected chairperson respected co chairperson and esteemed panelists दोस्तों आज मैं जो जर्नी बताने के लिए चाह रहा हूँ बहुत ही श्रेष्ठी जर्नी तो जर्नी की शुरुआत जैसे जैसे एक चैनल से शुरू हुई मेरा करियर भी ऐसे ही चलता है आज तो पैसे है जिनके माध्यम से हम 200 चैनल तक जाना चाहते हैं वो एक चैनल से कैसे शुरू हुआ उनका जर्नी मैं आपको बताऊं और क्या विजन विजन वही था कि उन लोगों ने सोचा नहीं था कि कोविड टाइम में I don't get audio. Uh, pardon, audio का दिक्कत है। मेरा हर तक पहुंचने का प्रयास। तो यहाँ तो बाय से इसे 24 बाय से हम अपनी जब भी वो देखना चाहते हैं तो देख सकते हैं। ऐसा प्रोविजन कोविड के टाइम में बाय से इसे मंदुर से हुआ। अब देख रहे हैं तो वो जो रिजल्ट था वो पूरा जर्नी था। ओह ओके ओके। Just a minute, let me check. एक ही चैनल इस वक्त हमारे घर डायरेक्ट में वो बड़े वाली आई गेट इट काउंट 3.66 मीटर वाली एंटेना लगाया 
और मिस्सी के टीचर्स के लिए नो ऑडियो अब देख रहे हैं ट्विटर वाला डायरेक्ट होम वाला जो रिसीवर है वो उनके साथ वो डिश हमको मिला क्योंकि तो प्राइस भी जो चालीस हजार में मिला करती थी वो चार हजार में मिल जाता थी उनकी रिच बड़ी तो कहां तक हम पहुंच सकते हैं तो 2005 में प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी हाई सेकेंडरी ग्राम पंचायत मेडिकल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज में पॉलिटेक्निक कॉलेज में हायर एजुकेशन कॉलेज में और डायट और बी एड के बच्चों के लिए तो हर जगह वो प्राइस भी कम हुई इसलिए रिच भी बहुत बड़ी टेक्नोलॉजी का भी विकास का हमने लाभ ऐसे 2014 में लेके तो ऑनरेबल पी एम साहब ने जो संसद में पार्लियामेंट में जो विजन दिया था वो तो विजन हम देखेंगे गांव के बालक को भी उत्तम से उत्तम शिक्षा मिले मामले पर भर के लिए खड़ा हमारे पास हर गांव में अच्छे से चल रहा हो लेकिन आज का विज्ञान हमें लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन के लिए पूरी ताकत देता शहर में बैठ करके तो उत्तम से उत्तम शिक्षक के माध्यम से गांव के आंतरिक जीवन पर बैठे हुए स्कूल के बच्चों को हम पढ़ा सकते हैं हम सैटेलाइट व्यवस्था का उपयोग उस आधुनिक विज्ञान का उपयोग हम गरीब बच्चों की शिक्षा के लिए क्यों न कर लेकिन ये वो जो विजन दिया था उनके बाद हमें रहेगा सोलह चैनल हो गए और वीडियो ऑडियो नेटवर्क फॉर डेवलपमेंट एंड एजुकेशन वो सोलह चैनल वन क्लास वन चैनल की जो अभी जो विजन दिया इसी हिसाब से मेरे यहाँ वो चैनल की शुरुआत हुई आज वाइसे स्टूडियो में वंदे गुजरात की सोलह चैनल तो है ही लेकिन थर्टी टू चैनल है जो स्वयं प्रभा की है और पी एम विद्या की भी उसमें बारह चैनल है इस तरह एक चैनल का ये जर्नी अभी फिफ्टी वन चैनल तक हम पहुंच गए तो आप देख सकते हैं थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स मीटर की जगह पे भी पहुंच गए जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स मीटर तक तो इतना छोटा सा डिश उनका प्राइस भी बहुत कम पंद्रह सौ प्राइस में पंद्रह सौ कम प्राइस पे वो हर बच्चे अपने घर पर वो बाइसेक का जो भी टेलीकास्ट हो रहा है उनका लाभ ले सकते हैं एक ही जगह पे एक साथ दस स्टूडियो और फिफ्टी वन चैनल का टेलीकास्ट अपने आप एक अहम बात है तो बाइसेक बन गया विश्व का एक सबसे बड़ा लार्जेस्ट एजुकेशनल डीएच नेटवर्क उनको लेके हम हर बच्चे तक पहुंच सकते हैं शुरुआत में ट्रेनिंग के लिए यूज करते थे बाद में जब सोलह चैनल पर एक गवर्न क्लास के लिए जो एक चैनल मिलने लगी मोटिवेट किया है हमने ऑनरेबल पी एम साहब जब गुजरात के सीएम थे तो सर ने बहुत मोटिवेट किया है छोटा छोटा आइडिया थे कुछ भी लेने जाते हैं तो उसमें वीडियो एडिशन करवा था कि पांचवी कक्षा का साउंड का एक लेसन था उसमें खुद आके बैठ गए और बहुत सारे इनपुट्स भी दिए बच्चों के साथ इंटरेक्शन भी किया इसी प्रोग्राम का जब सोलह चैनल पूरी शुरू नहीं हुई थी तब ई ग्राम में उनका टेलीकास्ट करवाया तो पूरा एक सिस्टम कैसे काम करता है उनका एक विजन दिया तो एक लक्ष्य खाली एक पुतुल बनाने में भरे सकता हो आप जीवन में भरे सकते आपने कोई सिनेमा नो गीत कोई क्लास में भराय दो कोई शिक्षक भराय दो टीवी पर जो आ जो सिनेमा नो गीत आ शब्द आड़ी जता है तो राग आड़ी जता है एनोर्गे टीवी पर भरी सकते बात ऐसी बनी कि हम सिर्फ यहाँ से टेलीकास्ट नहीं कर तो बच्चों को भी इतना एक्सपोजर दिया तो गुजरात के जो एजुकेशनल ब्लॉक्स वहां से हम हर वीक में दो स्कूल को यहाँ लाते और यहाँ जहाँ बच्चों की जरूरत बच्चों के साथ फेस टू फेस बोर्ड में इतनी पढ़ाई हो रही है इस तरह से एक प्रोग्राम बनता था एक्सपर्ट टीचर पढ़ा देते हैं बच्चे यहाँ आके स्टूडियो में आगे पढ़ते थे उनका एक टेलीकास्ट साथ में इन बच्चों को तीन दिन के लिए गांधीनगर में अलग अलग जगह पर तो एक्सपोजर दिया जाता था साइंस सिटी विधानसभा प्रकृति उद्यान आदि जगह पर ले जाके एक्सपोजर का माध्यम बना वंदे गुजरात से बहुत सारे एक्सपेरिमेंट और एक्टिविटीज भी स्टूडियो में स्टूडियो की साइज इतनी बड़ी है कि हम बच्चों को बुला के वहां बहुत सारी एक्टिविटीज करवा सकते हैं अब देख रहे आप सबको पता भी होगा 
टीचर के लिए टेन डेज का ट्रेनिंग कंपलसर तो हमने कास्केड मोड में जो ट्रांसमिशन लॉस होता है वो कम करने के लिए हमने एक मिक्स मॉडल हाइब्रिड मॉडल डेवलप किया वो था कि यहाँ से कोई नया कॉन्सेप्ट रखते थे उनके साथ बाद में हर जगह पर लोकल जो टीचर है लोकल एक्सपर्ट है वो उनको डेवलप करते थे एक्टिविटीज करवाते बाद में इंटरेक्शन करवाते थे और सबसे लास्ट में यहाँ से स्टूडियो से इंटरेक्ट होता था टीचर के मन में जो भी सवाल है वो यहाँ टू वे ऑडियो की सुविधा थी वीडियो वन वे था लेकिन ऑडियो टू वे थे तो टीचर्स अपने आप ऐसे कोई भी क्वेरी के लिए यहाँ से जुड़ सकते आप फोटोग्राफ्स में देख सकते हैं कि ऑनरेबल पीएम साहब साहब जब ऑनरेबल सीएम थे इस वक्त हर वेकेशन में वो जो ट्रेनिंग रहती थी पहले थी आपके टीचर्स के साथ बात करते स्टूडियो में कुछ टीचर रहते थे बाकी का टेलीकास्ट के होते थे उनकी वजह से वो पूरे स्टेट के टीचर वो सुन पाते थे और लास्ट में इंटरेक्शन भी टेलीफोन से जो होता था तो इस तरह पूरा ट्रेनिंग का एक नया स्वरूप मिला अलग अलग ट्रेनिंग की बात जो न सिर्फ टीचर्स के लिए लेकिन मिड डे मील के कुक के लिए भी ट्रेनिंग बोर्ड एग्जाम के टाइम पर एग्जामिनेशन ड्यूटी में जितने भी टीचर और क्लियर साफ कर रहा है उनके लिए ट्रेनिंग हर टाइम में जो भी जरूरत पड़ी सब में वो माध्यम सबसे उपयोगी शुरुआत हमारे यहाँ सेकेंड स्टूडियो में बहुत सारी चीजें उपलब्ध है वीडियो कैमरा टेलीटॉप कैमरा विजन मिक्सर ऑडियो मिक्सर कंप्यूटर वो तो सब रहते ही है और खुद का एक गुजरात स्टेट वाइड एरिया नेटवर्क है जहाँ इंटरनेट की सुविधा पूरे स्टेट में मिलती है वो सुविधा भी यहाँ उपलब्ध थी तो स्टूडियो आप देखे तो इस टाइप का पूरा स्टूडियो का लुक है कंटेंट डेवलप करने के लिए रिकॉर्डिंग के पहले और बाद में जो प्रोसीजर है वो आप देख सकते हैं आपने स्टूडियो तो देखा बेस बैंड है हर एफ अपलिंग से होता है इलेवन मीटर का के यू बैंड एंटेना वहां से जाता है सैटेलाइट जो जी सेट है हमारा जो दूरदर्शन के लिए जो सैटेलाइट यूज हो रहा है सेम सैटेलाइट से वंदे गुजरात का टेलीकास्ट है ऐसे होता है सेटेलाइट और सेटेलाइट से जहाँ एंटेना लगा हुआ है वहां तक हम पहुंच सकते मान लो कि अभी स्टूडियो में नहीं है हम साइंस फेयर करते हैं तो गुजरात के हम बच्चों को साइंस फेयर भी दिखा सकते हैं गुजरात में जहां भी यहाँ से 200-300 किलोमीटर के कोई भी शहर में हम साइंस फेयर स्टेट लेवल करते हैं तो बाइसे की टीम वहां आके और लाइव टेलीकास्ट कर सकते हैं यानी कि रिमोट लोकेशन से भी स्टूडियो को लिंक कर सकते हैं और वहां से हम टेलीकास्ट करते हम तो यूज करते हैं एज ए जी सबसे बड़े चार चैनल तो चला ही रहे साथ साथ हमारी ट्रेनिंग में भी हम यूज कर रहे हैं जिसे आई के अलावा डायरेक्ट गुजरात सेकेंडरी और हाई सेकेंडरी एजुकेशन बोर्ड समग्र शिक्षा जी टी यू जी आई टी कमिश्नर ऑफ स्कूल अपने जो भी कुछ नई टीचर से बात बतानी है तो हर कोई लोग हर कोई इंस्टीट्यूशन उनका अच्छे से लाभ लेते हैं डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी टीचर एजुकेशन यूनिवर्सिटी चिल्ड्रन यूनिवर्सिटी एजुकेशन के सिवा और भी सारे डिपार्टमेंट है रूरल डेवलपमेंट से लेकर आप देख सकते हैं स्कीम पर सेंसस ऑपरेशन की बात हो या ई ग्राम विश्व ग्राम सोसाइटी की बात हो बिजनेस डिपार्टमेंट है जैसे बाइसेक यूजर्स है मेडिकल एजुकेशन के लिए रूरल डेवलपमेंट के लिए वाटर एंड लैंड मैनेजमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन हो चाहे कोई भी इंस्टीट्यूशन इस तरह बाइसेक का यूज कर सकते हैं कि हमने जो ई कंटेंट प्रिपेयर किया है जो बहुत सालों से हमारे पास है तो उनको रिलुक करना पड़ेगा फिर से एल ई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी की जो अपेक्षा है इस अपेक्षा को ध्यान में रखते हुए पूरा कंटेंट है उसको फिर से हमको डेवलप करना पड़ेगा सबसे बड़ी बात जो एन ई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में लिखी है वो इंक्लूसिवनेस का पूरा चैनल इंक्लूसिव करने के लिए सब टाइटल और कॉमन साइन लैंग्वेज को करने का हमारे पास सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है क्वालिटी कंट्रोल फिर से देखना पड़ेगा नया पैरामीटर्स के साथ देखना पड़ेगा अवेयरनेस के लिए कुछ न कुछ कार्यक्रम करना पड़ेगा और वो जो 
फीडबैक एनालिसिस है तो उनको फिर से नई तरह से देखना है हमारी जर्नी एक चैनल से शुरू हुई थी अब दो सौ चैनल तक हम जाने वाले हैं तब हम सिर्फ नंबर के साथ साथ उनको क्वालिटी में भी इंप्रूव करने के लिए हमारे पास सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है बहुत काम करना पड़ेगा लेकिन वो जो माध्यम है दुनिया भर में कहीं इतना बड़ा माध्यम हमारे सामने ही दो सौ चैनल वाला हो जा रहे तो देश के हर कोने में पहुंचने की उनकी जो ख्वाहिश है वो हम मानते हैं कि वो पूर्ति होने वाली है तो सबसे ज्यादा आनंद हमको मिल रहा है तो इसी माध्यम से हम बच्चे तक हम पहुंचे इसी अपेक्षा के साथ धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर जोशी जी और Uh, sending your message uh, though i know you people are working in touch with difficulty but the uh, video which uh, you sent that shows that how multi stakeholder partnership is working in the area and uh, how successfully the bande gujarat 16 channels are being run with multiple stakeholders partnership and the content generation so thanks for sharing the journey of uh, bande gujarat uh, channels through uh, bisac uh, network and uh, uh, friends now uh, we have almost uh, 55 minutes uh, for the discussion uh, since we have completed the uh, presentation by the panelists so with the permission of the chair and the co chair now we'll be going ahead with the discussion but i have couple of things uh, to share before we uh, start the discussion one is uh, we have so many members nearly 66 people are there and uh, 15 people they have given their consent uh, to discuss on these various issues and i request that uh, if some of you can also share your comment suggestions observations uh, related to uh, expansion of uh, pme vidya channel to 200 12 to 200 so most welcome and also i request that if the uh, experts from different area they can raise their virtual hand so that it will be easy for me to uh, take them uh, for the discussion call them, them by name and besides that i must mention that at the end of this session our team will be developing an action plan based on the discussion and it will it will include a research and development how and what should happen so that it support 200 channels it will also include the continuous capacity building of stakeholders including the uh, uh, teachers trainers teacher educators starting from schooling to higher education sector and uh, also uh, it will uh, also we part of the skill development as honorable prime minister was mentioning uh, during the inaugural session that uh, uh, we have also to uh, see uh, that the skill development of the stakeholders are taken care of and the demographic divide which demographic dividend which is uh, uh, to be taken because two third of our population uh, is youth so nearly 66 70 crore population in india are youth how their skill training can happen so that they will be skilled human resource for running such initiatives uh, in the area and uh, uh, these are some of the discussion points uh, that we can say and open and distance learning is also another crucial area because we have millions of stakeholders who are pushed out or pushed out pulled out from the schooling or uh, higher education system so how their uh, concerns can be taken care of so with these words now uh, i uh, request all of you to come out with your comments and suggestions uh, there was a request from uh, the director uh, scrt uh, jammu and kashmir professor veena pandita ji uh, to uh, talk uh, first so with all your permission with the permission of the chair and co chair i request uh, professor vina pandita ji 
to please go ahead then we'll be requesting professor jb nadda ji director of cc ugc uh, to go ahead uh, ma'am and uh, all of you i must mention we have at best 2 to 3 minutes for each of us because only 55 minutes there for the discussion and uh, uh, i will request if uh, uh, rather than showing the slides if we can uh, extend for speak on various issues and give otherwise if you are showing slides it's okay no problem but be precise thank you over to professor bina pandita good afternoon everybody um, uh, i would uh, i would uh, like to go very because of the paucity of time i would uh, be very brief and uh, i would like to share that um, this uh, i would be giving the scenario of jnk vis a vis our digital education uh, we have a comparative internet penetration uh, as if we compare it with india as per our reports 2019 we have uh, 50% uh, 41% uh, penetration of computers and uh, internet penetration in india uh, uh, as compared to the total population of india of uh, this and while as we have 50% in jnk which is evident in uh, from this slide then we have out of school children who are uh, who neither are connected with internet nor uh, with the computers and uh, the the graphics are uh, shown here it's almost uh, on an average it is almost 4% of the total student population then uh, next slide uh, that, is, that is our uh, number of schools as per our udis data are 28000 which includes 5500 schools private 28863 uh, our total number of students which we cater in this is 2542047 students which we cater next slide and uh, if we compare the computer uh, facility that we have in our schools in jnk it is only 25 percent of the uh, total schools including private schools which has the more uh, ratio of private schools into it and um, uh, the internet facility if we talk about the internet facility we have only 20 12 percent of the schools that is 300 or 3460 schools out of 28000 schools for 12 percent uh, which have the internet facility with it so uh, that is what it goes to our challenges and we can see that uh, i won't go uh, next next higher uh, I won't, uh, uh, you know, uh, say what all the, the challenges have been discussed so far, but uh, with, uh, with our uh, district, we have, you know, uh, the challenge of uh, a major issue is internet services, inadequate internet services and frequent internet shutdowns, uh, which has to a great extent been covered recently. And recently we have been seeing, seeing lesser shutdowns, but this is a huge problem. Then we have uh, local Local specific content we have uh, in as per eight schedule language we have eight languages which are uh, regional languages and we have to cater to the regional languages uh, if we talk about the mother tongue uh, education to our uh, children so uh, giving all this scenario and what we have discussed so far it is very imperative that we see that the uh, the role of uh, having dedicated tv channels becomes more important and it is you know uh, 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 it is imperative that we um, we have the dedicated tv channels and it's a welcome step from by government to take tv channels from 12 to 200 and what i see that uh, that uh, what we have to the uh, Giving all the, I mean, you know, uh, the uh, uh, what you call difficulties and hardships and uh, the challenges that we are to face. What are the main five points I have uh, uh, taken up from the discussion that we need to have? Number one, that we have to have research, uh, proper research cell. Uh, uh, which will say us that what attracts children because uh, we are dealing with the school children uh, and we have to know that what is their mindset and what attracts them gets them you know uh, takes them glued to the uh, tv and uh, so that they understand so we have to innovate and re-innovate our uh, research about the giving them the lessons 
then we have the infrastructure problems uh, in our state we have mainly of infrastructure problems we don't have the labs in our schools we don't have maybe our uh, geographical situation is such that there are not uh, you know uh, the tv even tv are not are not working at present and we have to see that what makes them working now how communities and will uh, village or uh, you know panchayats can be uh, got into the picture and how their help can be taken up so uh, we have to see the infrastructure part of it then third point is that awareness is to be created that we run the programs but people are not aware students are not aware about the channels and the program so we have to take the awareness to a great extent and uh, my fourth point is that uh, uh, since uh, we are not able to make up the base of the so so FLN, which is uh, the, the the you know giving being given stress by government of India, is to be taken as a challenge through uh, this TV channel as well. I mean, uh, some dedicated uh, channels are to be kept to be, uh, which will develop the literacy and numeracy of the children so that they don't uh, feel the difficulty at the later stage. Then uh, translation of the uh, translation of this uh, what you call uh, the uh, translation of the uh, content uh, which takes it to the regional language and mother tongue uh, in different languages is to be seen uh, of, of about all the states in uh, JNK particularly as well. And then there has to be a proper monitoring system, which will uh, which will essentially make it you know um, uh, which will essentially make it you know uh, seen that the proper the program on which our uh, education uh, system of uh, the government of education government of India is working so hard is uh, uh, got to the remotest possible uh, corner of our country. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity thank you so much thank you very much ma'am thanks for highlighting uh, the issues uh, related to internet uh, and uh, infrastructure in the state and how the television network can help us uh, to reach out and bridge the digital divide and with the uh, hardware particularly the setup box and all provision in ict scheme for schools so maybe uh, with the low cost, 1500, 2000 uh, rupees, uh, schools can procure or the systems can procure and use it for television uh, viewing. So thank you very much, madam. Over to Professor J.V. Madaji, Director, Consortium for Educational Communication, uh, UGC uh, in New Delhi. Professor Nada. Yeah, thank you, madam. Bina Panditaji. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairman uh, Nageshwar Raoji, Co-Chairperson uh, DG Vaisak Singh Sam, and uh, the panelists uh, who had shared their point of view. Uh, it was really a learning experience. I'm Director Consortium for Educational Communication. Uh, I will just limit myself because there are many speakers uh, who, are, who would like to share their ideas. There are a few things which come to my mind and I'll be focusing only on 12 to 200 cha channels that we are talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly it is a Herculean task uh, under the leadership of Prime Minister. I see the panelists and, and the chairperson and the co-chairperson are working on a mission mode. And I think it, this is the same thing which is expected out of us uh, to see to it uh, that the objective of the government and our own social responsibility that we reach the last learner uh, is concerned. Now, friends, uh, the biggest challenge which uh, Bairasa would also accept uh, being associated to the school education institutions is uh, uh, the, the shortage of uh, uh, content which is available with us in view of from uh, 12 channels to uh, going up to 200 channels where each classroom will be getting a channel. Now, this would be a Herculean task for all of us to develop uh, uh, the content I've made available. I think at this point of time, Stan, me corrected that as uh, They are running about uh, uh, four hours and then they, they repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. 
I think it should come up to eight hours a day, and it should uh, be repeated three times a day. This is how I look at the channels. We have got 11 channels, and we are able to uh, run eight hours. Uh, two channels, we run 12 hours content. So the availability of content is extremely important uh, for, for all of us. Now, uh, when we talk about availability of content, certainly uh, one language, one can always do it, but we are talking about 14. We, we as higher education, uh, we are converting the entire thing into 14 languages. I'll talk out of my experience. Now, uh, there are two ways of looking at it. Uh, when we translate, the either we translate it or we go about with uh, uh, mm, subtitling it. Now, when we subtitle it, let me put it very clearly that uh, we are talking about audio visual. Now, when we get into subtitle effect, all research studies have also seen that the, the vision of an eye is just 10% of a camera. So when, you, when, when the camera clicks something, then it clicks the whole thing. But when you look at through your eyes and you look at the shoes of a person, then you can't see the face of the person. So the impact of visual gets lost in only subtitles. So when we're talking about monotony, when we're talking about uh, you know, holding interest of an individual, then I think we need to think to transfer to re-transcreate the content rather than translating the content. Because when we talk about translating it, it very becomes extremely difficult to see the movement of the lip also. It, it, it disinterests the, the learner. So first is uh, how to go about with translation or probably identify, I would say, there should be live lectures, uh, which, should be, which should be telecasted uh, in different languages, identifying those good teachers. And those good teachers can uh, replica the, the, the content, which whatever is available. The second is quality. This is another challenge that we are going to face. We are talking about 200, challenges, 200 channels. Now, converting our content into 14 different, you know, when we talk about private public partnership also, and even if we give it to vendors, in our system, we have got a system in place, academic council, academic committee, which looks into it, and then it passes on the content to us. But when we give it to partners, uh, whoever it may be, who is going to uh, assure us that the content is very good? Because such a huge content, it will be very difficult for any organization to, uh, to go through the entire content and, and move forward. Yet another thing, you know, I was, I was just uh, uh, listening to the panelists also, and they were talking about, uh, and Prime Minister also talks about the Divyan. In my experience, we also uh, develop content and uh, probably on the half screen, we show the content and on the half screen, we show sign language also. But uh, uh, somewhere along the line, I feel that this content must be only in sign language and the channel should be de de dedicated to the sign language rather than you know, mixing it with, the, it causes a lot of distraction for the people uh, who are in sign language. And the sign language content must be developed by the people who, who, who are impaired because you know they think very differently. I think very differently and those people think very differently. So we need to be extremely careful uh, uh, while developing content for Divyangs. It must not be just a number game. We are talking, Prime Minister was talking about uh, world-class quality uh, of content and that is our concern how to go about. Dedicating some of the channels, you know, somebody was talking about, uh, um, uh, somebody was talking about sports channel and various other channels so that, you know, the, I look forward to it that other than the con content and curriculum, there should be uh, some, some channels dedicated for holistic development. Like what we do is uh, when we talk about holistic development, we have got a few uh, um, themes Say, for example, human rights. Say, for example, uh, Swachh Bharat we have included. Say, for example, Atmanir Bhar Bharat. Say, for example, startups. Now, these are the kinds of programs which also need to be, 
and there must be independent channels which can be shown on Saturdays and Sundays and probably make a series out of it, which are interesting in nature. Say, for example, there is one uh, channel which was running Surabhi. Now, Surabhi was such a popular channel and it talked about India and there's some kind of patriotism that comes into our mind. And these are the kind of channels, dedicated channels should be there uh, along with this so that there is holistic development of an individual. Uh, we were talking about attention span. Um, I, I, we all agree, research studies are talking about it, that the attention of people uh, is reducing every day. Uh, earlier people had more attention and, uh, as compared to now. But the question is that academics is something a serious business in any case. And uh, uh, people talk about two minutes and three minutes videos. We also have short learning objectives where a concept is cleared or concept is uh, dispelled uh, in two, three, four, five minutes. But as far as the content is concerned, it has to go longer. And uh, let us not get worried about it, that uh, attention span. So we, we are not here for gimmicks. We are here for serious, good education to be provided. And that is how I would like to stop here because there are many speakers and as and when the discussion comes in, I'll, I'll share my arguments as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nadaji, for highlighting some of the issues, including uh, feeding 200 monsters or elephants. So, and uh, uh, how quality content could be generated and uh, at least uh, eight hours of content with two repeats could be a win-win situation uh, for the system and quality and CWS in front also, we cannot be behind there. So we need to stand uh, always first, second to none. So I thank you very I much. I had my presentation, but I thought, you know, there are so many speakers, so I hold it. Thank, uh, thank you. you, sir. If you share in the group or mail, so we can- yeah, I will share it with you. I'll share and, it with you. Uh, we can uh, take it for the way forward plan also. Accept, Certainly. Sir. Thank, well, you, sir. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, the next uh, speaker, two institutions, particularly NIOS and IGNO. So they are the stalwarts in open learning, open and distance learning. And I think perhaps if we talk about schooling and open learning and higher education and open learning, and uh, they are uh, um, the largest open university and open schooling system uh, in the world. So uh, how uh, do uh, Professor Rajiv Kumar Singh and uh, Dr. S.K. Mahapatra Ji, Rajiv Kumar Singh Ji is Director of Academic NIOS and uh, Prof. Dr. Mahapatra is Director of Electronic Media Production Center uh, Indra Gandhi National Open University. So we seek your comments, suggestions and observations, sir. Over to Dr. Rajiv Kumar Singh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bahira, sir. Uh, with the permission of Chair Professor Nageshwar Rao, sir, and the Co-Chair uh, Singh, sir, uh, Moderator uh, Behra Saab, all the panelists, distinguished panelists, and my fellow uh, interactive participants. Uh, as advised by Behra Ji, I would be sharing the importance of direct-to-home televisions from the perspective of open and distance learning institution. Like any other good open and distance learning institution, we do here at NAS have also adopted multiple delivery approach to deliver around 200 of our programs effectively to the learner in NAS. Other than having self-learning material in the printed form, we have made available good number of our courses at the SWAM MOOCs platform. We have also made available all our e-contents on the Diksha platform. We are also ensuring live beaming of secondary and senior secondary sessions at the PME with your channels. We do have the provision of community radio and the Mukt Vidyavani, which is a wave streaming radio to reach out to the learners. We are also having audio video programs on the YouTube channel. We have also made 
the digital content of all the courses, be it academic or the vocational, what we are offering to the learners at the NIS portal. Uh, we have gone for having QR code, that's uh, the energized textbooks. And recently we have gone for stabilizing a virtual open school uh, platform, where at we are going to provide end-to-end -end solution to the learners. All the paradigms pertaining to ensure effective teaching learning transaction, be it a live classroom, virtual laboratory, carrying out assessment or holding public examination through remote proctoring and badging, that is the issuance of certifications. All those paradigms are going to be taken care of by the, uh, by, uh, the virtual school uh, platform. Lekin in sab jab hum bahu vikalpiye madhyam ki charcha karte hain khas kar aise sansthanon ke baare mein jo mukt aur durast shiksha ke chhetra mein hain aur shikshan aur adhigam ki gatividhiyon ko shikshaarti tak pahunchane ki jab hum charcha karte hain to usme sabse jo prabhavshali jo nazar aata hai wah direct to home television aur radio hi nazar aata hai मैं बानगी के तौर पे कुछ उदाहरण जो कोविड संक्रमण के दौरान मैं और मेरी टीम ने हमारी संस्था में किया है मैं आपके साथ साझा करना चाहूंगा जब ये कोविड का संक्रमण आया था उससे पहले आ, हमारे पास स्वयं प्रभा के चार चैनल थे जिसमें सेकेंडरी कोर्सेज के लिए हमारे पास एक शारदा चैनल था सीनियर सेकेंडरी के लिए पननी चैनल था एक वागदा चैनल भी था जो टीचर एजुकेशन के लिए इस्तेमाल होता था और जैसा कि अभी प्रोफेसर नड्डा साहब कह रहे थे एक डेडिकेटेड हमारा ज्ञानामृत चैनल था जिस पे हम इंडियन साइन लैंग्वेज में कंटेंट को लेके हम सजीव प्रसारण के लिए जाते थे तो संक्रमण के पहले हम तीन घंटे का सजीव प्रसारण करते थे लेकिन संक्रमण के दौरान हमने इसे आठ घंटे का सजीव प्रसारण किया एंड वी हैव गोन फॉर इंश्योरिंग द लाइव सेशन एवरी डे फॉर एट आवर्स रिगार्डलेस ऑफ Holidays, Saturdays and the Sundays. उसी दौरान जब ग्रीष्म अवकाश की जब छुट्टियां आई तो we decided to organize even the summer camps on uh, the direct to home television platform what we used to have those days. और हमने उस summer camps में हमने yoga classes भी किया हमने painting के भी classes किए हमने music का भी सजीव प्रसारण किया साथ साथ में जो फॉर्मल स्कूल एजुकेशन सिस्टम का उस समय में जो कुछ पब्लिक uh, एग्जामिनेशन चल रहा था हमने काउंसलिंग का भी प्रोविजन किया uh, जो नवाचार हमने किया था हमने वी मेड अवर डायरेक्ट टू होम टेली टेलीविजन इन टू अ वेरी डायनामिक प्लेटफॉर्म वेर इन वी हैव गोन फॉर मेकिंग द प्रोविजन ऑफ चैट बॉक्स हमने कुछ टेल फ्री सेंटर्स भी स्थापित किए थे पोर्टल पर भी बच्चे संवाद कर सकते थे जब ये सजीव प्रसारण हो रहा था तो शिक्षार्थी और गुरुजन के बीच में संवाद कायम हो रहा था और जिसके परिणाम फलस्वरूप ये बड़ा ही एक इफेक्टिव प्लेटफॉर्म के रूप में ये विकसित हुआ था देखिए जो दूसरा पहलू है जब हम अन्य माध्यम की बात करते हैं खासकर मुक्त दुरुस्त शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में तो डिजिटल एजुकेशन के अपने चैलेंजेस भी हैं जैसे अच्छे इंटरनेट का होना परिवार में शेयर्ड डिवाइसेस का होना डेटा एवेलेबिलिटी एवेलेबिलिटी का इश्यूज होना ये कुछ ऐसे इश्यूज हैं जिसको भली भांति डायरेक्ट टू होम डीटीएच चैनल जो है उसे वो एड्रेस करता है अगर हम देखते हैं तो डायरेक्ट ये जैसा कि मेरे पहले चर्चा में फेलो पार्टिसिपेंट्स ने भी बताया है कि बड़ा ही कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव है कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव होने के साथ साथ हम भारत के जो बेस्ट टीचर्स अवेलेबल हैं वो हम एक मौका देते हैं कि इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे आए और इस डीटीएच प्लेटफॉर्म के थ्रू देश के सुदूरवर्ती क्षेत्र में जो ग्रामीण परिवेश में जो ग्रामीण परिवेश का बच्चा है वहां तक बेस्ट टीचर अवेलेबल हो वो बेस्ट टीचर उन्हें मिले इसको भी ये इंश्योर करता है दूसरा जो एक रिस्ट्रिक्शन नहीं है कि विद इन द फोर वॉल ऑफ क्लास रूम शिक्षार्थी एक बार हो सकता है या पचास हो सकता है ये उसकी परिपाटी को भी ये पूर्ण करता है जिसकी सीमाएं अनंत हैं 
एक एक अच्छा सा एक रिसोर्स पूल तैयार कर सकता है और जिसकी बहुत इजी एक्सेसिबिलिटी है और ये मैक्सिमम रिचेबिलिटी को भी इंश्योर करता है तो आ, मैं समझता हूं कि आने वाले समय में जो आ, 200 टीवी चैनल का जो प्रयास है ये एक बहुत ही सफल प्रयास होगा और आत्मनिर्भर भारत के क्षेत्र में और खासकर जो शिक्षा का क्षेत्र और जो दशा और दिशा होने जा रही है उसमें आने वाले समय में ये जो 200 टीवी चैनल हैं बहुत ही सशक्त भूमिका निभाएंगे धन्यवाद बहरा साहब थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर राजीव कुमार सिंह जी डायरेक्टर academic nios for highlighting uh, some of the work already done by nios and how these 200 channels can be a boon for students and teachers in the open and distance learning also thank you very much uh, professor sk mahapatra ji director empc igno sir do you have any comment suggestion observation please go ahead thank you uh, dr behra Uh, the chairperson of the uh, session professor nageshwar rao vice chancellor igno dr singh dg besak distinguished uh, panelists and participants uh, thank you for giving this opportunity i'll try to be as brief as possible uh, because there are so many others who are in the list and uh, we are running shortage of time but i was very impressed with uh, the three Terms which the honourable Prime Minister has used in his inaugural uh, address, that is innovation, inclusion, and integration, and he talked about universalisation of quality education at the doorstep of the people. So that speaks all about the endeavour of one class, one TV channel, for which we are all uh, gathered together. Friends, so when I was listening to the uh, foreign minister in her budget speech she was also talking about a resilient education delivery system to be developed in the context of one class one tv channel and she was also talking about to facilitate better learning outcome now all these things which we have been listening from the prime minister and the foreign minister are in consonance with the national education policy 2020 because the national education policy also talks about the digital divide in the country and also says that a multimode channel of television internet radio community radio should be in use so that the benefit of quality education can re reach to the most marginalized sections of our society so when the foreign uh, the finance minister was talking about uh, the digital initiatives in the budget uh, for this year she was also talking about the civil caste the civil tribes the weaker sections other marginalized groups and particularly the people residing in the rural and remote areas and all of us know that open university and open schools across the country at the national level and at the state level are all working with these target groups to increase access equity and inclusion in higher education so i am very happy that uh, the initiative of the government through the budget has really get reflected uh, in in the uh, ideas which were formulated in the national education policy 2020 even the economic survey which was presented before the uh, budget also talked about reverse migration of people from the urban to the rural schools in the country and reverse migration of people from the urban areas to the rural areas may be due to economic distress and therefore the economic survey also warned the government that there has to be concerted systematic effort to strengthen the government school education in the country and this particular decision is in the right direction now when i talk about my own university indira gandhi national open university uh, we have five educational tv channels there are four swayamprabha channels and there is a gyandarshan channel which we are running for the last 22 years and this is an initiative of the ministry of education ministry of information broadcasting the prasar bharti and earlier it was a consortium of which igno was treated as the nodal agency 
and we have developed contents for almost all fields whether it is pre primary primary secondary higher secondary or tertiary level education and earlier even the cec ncert uh, directorate of science and technology and the ministries were also, also associated with igno in propagating and promoting quality education uh, through the television channels even today also we have slots for the rashtriya sanskrit sansthan we have slots for the ncert ministry of corporate affairs and other ministries are using this channel we have content for 12 hours a day and rest 12 hours is repeat telecast and we have a art station which is directly linking us from here from the igno headquarters in, uh, in new delhi with the satellite so these are the advantages that we have decided we have 12 radio channels also through which uh, we provide radio programs not only uh, through the radio channels but also through a, a live streaming a, through the social media so therefore the greatest challenge that i feel i feel in this context of 12 to 200 channels in the country is how to prepare quality educational material for 365 days and 24 into 7 that will be and that to in regional languages that will be one of the challenges which ncert of course must have encountered we have all encountered so the persons who will now be responsible or the organization who will be responsible for developing the quality content in regional languages will have to take care of all these things the second channel the second challenge that i want to highlight here is access though these are dta channel direct to home free channels but at the same time unless and until it is integrated with social media platforms the reach will be limited say for instance in igno we have dta channel for gyandarshan but all the private service providers are providing free to air services and we don't get the facility of the durdarshan for uh, this direct to home facilities and recently we have integrated our satellite based transmission with the social media to increase the outreach so this is going to be another channel challenge then the third challenge will be the schedule and dissemination of information the schedule has to be prepared well in advance and the information has to go to the stakeholders through various agencies right from uh, the uh, uh, maybe a month or two months in advance so that the information reaches the most uh, i mean the last point so that people can provide uh, uh, get into this and the finally i would say that how to increase interactivity in the uh, entire tv program because sometimes television is being criticized for not giving facility for interactivity so we have to ensure that through social media platforms through telephone through email through chat box how this interactivity between the teacher and the student both in synchronous and asynchronous mode can be assured i think the all in all it's a excellent step initiative has been taken by the government now as educators as administrators as facilitators it is our responsibility to get it implemented as soon as possible for quality higher education at the doorstep of the marginalized sections of the society thank you very much thank you very much professor mahapatra director empc igno uh, new delhi uh, for your thoughts and especially for uh, uh, endorsing that how uh, these television uh, uh, channels could be a resilient education system for the whole country children and reaching out reaching the digital divide but at the nitty gritty action level definitely for enhancing access we need, need to have a schedule need based schedule and uh, uh, also information needs to be disseminated in a way that it reaches out to stakeholders and uh, the television programs need to uh, have interactivity feature as well thank you uh, i must uh, uh, mention that there are uh, three four scrts which are represented uh, across the country sri anwar sadat ji uh, from uh, government of kerala and uh, dr radha reddy ji from government of telangana and uh, also we have uh, uh, 
डॉक्टर नीरदा देवी जी फ्रॉम एसीआरटी आसाम एंड हर टीम सो आई रिक्वेस्ट द स्टेट टीम बिकॉज दीज चैनल्स बेसिकली आर गोइंग टू ब्रिज द बैरियर ऑफ लैंग्वेज लैंग्वेजेस वी हैव in our country because we have more than 1700 languages in the country with five distinct language families so how states are thinking it could be a boon uh, for the states uh, as far as the television network and having a channel for each class uh, in regional language or local language uh, over to anwar sadat ji he is the ceo kite uh, and uh, vectors channel government of uh, kerala and the government of kerala is also running uh, a channel dedicated tv channel which is uh, known as victors channel uh, so over to anwar sadat ji are you there i think I don't see uh, him here. Can anybody see anything yes, from sir, H C R T? Is there? Yeah, is there? Okay. I think he needs to unmute this. Uh, Anwar Sadat ji, um, technical team, can anybody help to unmute him? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bhaira ji. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, loud and okay, clear. Okay, in fact, yeah, yeah. I I will make it brief. Uh, thanks for uh, giving uh, us the opportunity. Basically, you know, in Kerala, uh, uh, thanks to ISRO, uh, we have started uh, this uh, uh, JUSAT. Uh, started utilizing the JUSAT facility early in 2005. Initially, it was for interactive facility, and in 2005, we have started using ROT channel called Victors uh, on that time. Uh, it was available only through the receive only terminal installed in schools okay but in 2009 10 the it, uh, local cable started carrying it okay then uh, uh, it, it it started the, uh, receiving through the local channels we have many programs on that like uh, uh, reality show educational reality show uh, nfdc sponsored 100 films Uh, bbc and dw content which are customized and translated so so many programs we are running uh, initially it was for 12 hours then 18 hours by 2019 we made it for 24 hours we made the platform uh, or web uh, youtube and social media the handles but now uh, when the, the major issue which I, i i would like to highlight here is that this was not available in the dth platform in kerala uh, 93% of the households have either access to dth network or cable network that means they have the access to cable tv uh, channels out of this uh, 70% comprising of cable and 30% is uh, the dth uh, channels but uh, the, after covid the only option for us to reach all students was the broadcast mode that is the victors channel the uh, edusat that, that network so the look uh, the dth operators also started carrying that by uh, 2020 june 1st when the academic year started last year we have the 100% access for uh, all dth and cable operators so this will be one challenge for our 200 channel also because what i am seeing right now the pm evidya channel we have tried to put some take some slots on that but uh, in most of the dth k operator maximum 3 or 4 classes are available in uh, out of 12 so what would be the strategy when it comes to oh, the 200 number that, that is one the second part the content uh, which is uh, thanks to covid uh, right now you know we have uh, the teachers are almost equipped to handle the online classes and the facilities have increased earlier they were sophisticated uh, studios concepts and all but now even you can have a good studio at home with uh, mojo kit and all and we are giving training on that also so uh, w- w- when you are seeing the content the technology and the academic part the curriculum part the pedagogical aspect should be clearly separated where cit ncrt and state scrt has to take a key role otherwise the content should not be in tune with the 
the national curriculum framework or NEP 2020 like that. So that is more important. We, we should not lose our quality when we are saying about the quantity because 200 channel, 24 hours, uh, you know, if, if, if a state takes one class for a, a channel, how much content it need to produce? So the quality should not be compromised uh, out of this. Then uh, uh, most important thing, the pattern which are adopted right now for the 12 PM EVDA channel, I think that is the best model because two hours, uh, two hours itself is, uh, is a little bit longer from our perspective for little kids studying in primary or primary. But for uh, higher secondary or class eight to 12, two hours, three hours, that is okay. We should not leave it beyond two hours of fresh content per day because the screen time, uh, the children should be, no, that should be, uh, uh, should be studied in, in, in all aspects. Then uh, when it comes to the infrastructure facility at home, that should be, there should be a, a no, collaboration between states and stakeholders so that certain things can be piggybacked and need not to reinvent things again. So these are my random thoughts and I think when it uh, get uh, implemented, we can give more uh, input from our experience. Also, we are looking more from uh, other uh, players. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Janwar Sadaji, for sharing the Victor's Channel Network and uh, your concerns on quality. Definitely, jointly, uh, we have to improve and also have uh, good content. Thank you very much. Uh, friends, we have uh, uh, also, uh, three, uh, four prominent uh, uh, collaborators, especially Rotary India, uh, uh, they provided nearly 2,000 content for one class, one channel uh, in collaboration with NCERT. We had one MOU. And we have also Geo, uh, Reliance Geo, and uh, they, uh, through uh, the network of Geo TV app, mobile app, we could reach to nearly 90 lakh people uh, through GOTV app using and uh, the viewers could catch the educational content. And similarly, we have Rocket Learning Foundation. Uh, so um, they also have a large content in preschool sector, which, uh, which was earlier not getting a space. And here with the implementation of one, uh, class one TV channel and having 200 channels for regional language content for the states also. So it is going to uh, be a deciding factor in a way to continue their education. Even we had one question raised by Murli Dharanji uh, that there are learning loss already uh, due to pandemic. So how uh, through our collaboration uh, through partners like Geo, like Rotary, and like uh, rocket learning, we can take this initiative forward. Even Arpan, uh, one of the organization who work in uh, psychosocial uh, well-being and health, the mental health of children, they are also uh, here. So how, what kind of content we should have and what kind of dissemination mechanism we should uh, have so that in a time-bound manner, we reach out uh, to the stakeholders. Yeah. So, over to Ajit Gupta ji. Right. Thank, thank you, Dr. Vera. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, first off, it was a real pleasure to listen to everyone's thoughts on this very important initiative. Uh, I think, you know, having 200 channels where we can disseminate high quality content uh, is fantastic. I'll also be short uh, because, you know, there are so many good people here to speak. But uh, as at Rocket Learning, we have been partnering with the central government, with Dr. Behra and his team, of course, in having content, digital content uh, that is used through the TV channels, through Diksha and other sources. We're also working with the governments of Har Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and other state governments uh, to support them, you know, in the localized, contextualized content that they have been sharing through different channels, including TV. Uh, right. So that's the that's our background. And we have had a lot of learning so far from our work. I just wanted to share some of that, you know, given that so many SCRTs and so many important organizations here mentioned on the call. Uh, right. Uh, so I think uh, so some of the best uh, practices that we are seeing in content, that's also one thing that wanted to uh, share, right? Uh, because right now, you know, there are various organizations with very, very good content, but many of those have not been necessarily made for TV or for WhatsApp or for the channels that we're using today. 
Uh, so what we have seen is important is, you know, making sure this content is localized and contextualized, uh, that it has to sort of, you know, be based on uh, that particular uh, region, you know, even small, small things are different from one state to another. Uh, and they should also be short. Uh, you know, we see that in attention spans have reduced, right? So I think various people mentioned that, you know, and obviously there's a huge opportunity now because we have a lot of channels. We have a lot of, you know, real estate, digital real estate is what I call it, right? Uh, to send a lot of stuff. Uh, but if that's not sort of easy, engaging and short, then people will sort of stop watching it, right? So in that way, I would advocate for, you know, multiple different short video content rather than a very long uh, lecture form in some sense, right? Sometimes uh, ideally if they can, uh, these digital activities sent on TV and other channels, can if they can trigger physical activity, uh, I think that would be fantastic as well, right? Especially for younger children. Uh, Rocket, at Rocket Learning, we have around 1500 different videos and audios uh, for the foundational stage, early childhood education, as well as uh, foundational literacy and numeracy. Uh, and especially for those ages, we find that, you know, if we can suggest some activities that people can do at home using easy materials, uh, you know, that adds a lot of interest rather than just have a medium where you are staring at the screen and there's nothing that, you know, uh, that you do after that, right? So use digital as a means to trigger uh, physical, uh, right? Gives a way to a very nice sort of uh, meaningful medium. Uh, finally, I think there's a call to action that we can propose again, right? Guiding children, parents, and others on what, how they can use this content effectively, right? Even teachers. Uh, so I think that is another important part. It's not as easy as just, you know, showing something and assuming that everyone will figure out how to use this, uh, right? Uh, or just passive consumption, right? So if you're triggering something, the call to action is important. Finally, connection to the SCRT curriculums is critical for teachers to take this seriously. Uh, we have found that teachers often ignore digital means if you know something else is coming which is entirely different from what they're teaching in class uh, so scrts and organizations working with them need to make sure that whatever is coming through digital means like the tv uh, should be connected to you know what the plan is for that week or that month in the classroom uh, if that doesn't happen then you know the teacher themselves sort of uh, you know indicate to the parents or children to just more or less ignore this right because they don't see the value in it themselves uh, so that is important i think the final point is that uh, making sure TV is linked to the omni channel that we are currently adopting. Many people are using WhatsApp, some are using SMS, some are using IVRS. Uh, can we just make sure these are all synced to each other, right? For example, on WhatsApp, can you send the link to the TV channel, right? And say, or, or, you know, to the schedule saying, okay, uh, today, this particular topic is going to be covered, right? Or this week's schedule is here. And I think that will lead to a lot more uptake on TV as well. And in Haryana and UP, the states we're working in, they've done a fantastic job of linking that and we've been supporting them to do that, right? So this nudges or the dissemination channel through uh, an omni-channel strategy, right? Which pushes people to actually look at the TV, right? Uh, and maybe creates a little bit more two-way is important for that TV layer to succeed as well, right? And vice versa. Uh, so I think finally, I'll just end with, you know, the point that teachers have to be very important partners in this. Uh, whole journey, uh, right? Because otherwise uh, it will become ignored. Parents or children listen to the teachers. So them being informed about this is very, very critical. So I, I'll stop here. These are some of the best practices that, you know, we have seen, uh, right? And privileged to work with, you know, uh, Dr. Bera's team and everyone Thank you. Uh, among you. Thank you very much for your concern and uh, definitely we'll discuss it further. Uh, thanks, uh, Ajit Gupta. Uh, and uh, now I request uh, Balakrishna Nayarji and Vishwajit Gorji if uh, you can uh, speak. And I request if we don't have repetition of points. So if there are newer points, so please do add. Yeah. Balakrishna Nayarji. Uh, thank you, sir. I will quickly put up a screen over here so that you know most of the points are there. We will make sure that most of the points are not missed out. So I would like to, in addition to the channels, like to bring about a point of saying that in addition to the TV channels, especially for the critical core classes, 9, 10, 11, 12, have an OTT kind of an app or a platform so that children will be able to learn as and when they wish to on core subjects without giving a facility of recording, downloading, forwarding, using the same content. So this puts lesser stress on the broadcasting system. And of course, uh, we talked about the extracurricular contents, uh, sports channel, uh, cyber security, stress management. I think uh, there is an NGO here, Arpan, which talks about the stress management part of it. So yes, I'll be very uh, clear that yes, many of this content in addition to the core content that we're talking about 
we would be very happy to carry this even if required as a dedicated separate channel because uh, if it doesn't fo fall under the uh, 200 channel list if we need to give an extra or two very happy to work with all of you uh, i must place on record uh, a special thanks to dr behra uh, to bizag and all of you for being very patient with us in the early days of us learning uh, this whole process of how to bring geo tv to the children of this country and we look forward to continuing to learn from each one of you and working with you thank you very much and uh, my points are here and i will be sharing them with dr behra and team uh, so that most of it can be covered in our discussions thank you dr behra yeah uh, thank you very much Vishwajit Gohanji. Thank you, Balaji. Sure, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, if I can just share my screen, I just have a couple of slides. So that it, uh, Balaji has is, to uh, log out attention. to the screen. Kindly unshare the screen, Balaji. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll keep it very brief. Uh, but in a sense, what I wanted to say is that, first of all, a big thank you. Uh, I think this is an excellent uh, example of uh, what I call uh, just a bit. Is my screen visible? Yes, very much. OK. So, uh, Beraji, a great example of uh, public-private partner, partnership, you know, what uh, NCRT and Ministry of Education has fostered. I'll just talk about uh, two or three aspects. First of all, what we did, you did mention about uh, our uh, role in the past uh, one year, what we are continuing to do and what we want to do. So, first and foremost, I think this is a great opportunity to also showcase how we can partner with each other with a lot of people who are there in this community. I would love to work with a lot of people in this forum. What we did we do in 2021, uh, as Behraji talked about, we created content for all mainstream uh, subjects, classes one to 10 in Hindi and English uh, medium. And it was broadcasted. We gave uh, our entire curriculum uh, free to NCRT TV and Diksha. I think it was a huge effort on our part. We created this whole content in six to seven months. But I think you're really seeing the values here. And uh, I thank uh, NC for that opportunity. So uh, what we are now doing is now that you know all our content classes 1 to 10 in English and Hindi, all subjects are available on PMS with their channels and Diksha. We are now moving to the physical mode. Uh, in JNK, uh, Madam spoke about the challenges of not having uh, internet uh, you know, capabilities uh, in the uh, schools and students. They are very actively working with various state governments in Punjab, in Sikkim, in Arunachal Pradesh, in Madhya Pradesh. We have already started installing our content, whatever is there on NCRT, in the hard disks, in the televisions of every school which has a facility. Uh, Sikkim, Arunachal has committed 100% of their schools should be provided with our content, all free. Now, that what I feel is how we leverage. Uh, we have these, uh, you know, standalone channels, which is non-interactive, and then we push it in the school, and the teacher uses it as a teaching aid and makes it interactive. It's so much easier to explain a solar system uh, with with audio visual content as opposed to a blackboard and a chalk. Now, uh, this is what we are continuing to do. We have covered four states. We want to cover another twenty, particularly states which uses English and Hindi as a medium. We have started now translating our content into regional languages. Maharashtra is the first one we are doing Marathi. And in a couple of months, that would be available. And we'll again provide this content to the schools, uh, whoever wants it for free. What we want to do next? We think that you know the next phase is uh, for investment uh, of a lot of uh, the players in the market is in vocational education. I heard from uh, Behraji that there's going to be a dedicated vocational education uh, channel. And I, I really welcome it. I've been talking to some of our, our other support partners, uh, Rajesh Kambayadji from PSCIB and CRT, Dr. Vishwajit Saha from CBSC, 
I think even uh, organizations like NIOS and now who definitely want to partner because the market is so big, everybody needs to uh, contribute. There's no question of competition. You know, we only complement each other. We need to create a huge repository of content for vocational training. And probably I'll do follow up conversations. I'll not waste too much of time here. We have a very clear plan to cover most of the uh, you know trades that is currently, for example, being created by PSCI. We had a chat with uh, Kambayaji recently, and we said that you know uh, if you have the trades and he has created a lot of textbooks, you want to convert it into e-learning content. I mean, uh, the way we did it for mainstream, we want to do it for vocational training, and of course we'll do it for free. And that's uh, I think the way forward, more collaboration and more support to each other. Thank you, Bairaji, for the wonderful uh, opportunity to talk to this August audience. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, thanks for your views also on uh, the channels and how we can take up contents related to pre-primary, even for adult literacy yes. and for skill development uh, in collaboration with Rotary. So uh, thank you very much. So yeah, I just uh, missed one point, if I can just add, uh, you're right, you know, we also want to do pre-primary pre -primary and adult literacy, and you know, the, that's one of the subsets, but very important, you know, right now, sir, you have created a, a, a state-of-the-art airport, where which has very few takers, it's such a wonderful platform that children don't know, they need to know every day what's uh, on offer, it's no use creating a calendar one month old. It has to be pushed. It could be pushed through social media. It could be pushed through SMSs. It could be sent to the schools. But so really, after so much of investment, you have to do something to push these, uh, you know, content available on television every day. Please do something about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jidda. Uh, there are four more presenters, uh, particularly for the discussion. Um, especially, I'll start from uh, the orphan team uh, since psychosocial support to children, including in COVID pandemic time, is crucial. So, uh, Madam Sonali, uh, what is your view? How these 200 TV channels can support the psychosocial well being of children, their parents, teachers, and also head teachers? And uh, since we are talking about the resilient system of education. Thank you, Dr. Behra, for giving this opportunity, and it was a pleasure hearing all the experts over here. So while leveraging technology and increasing uh, digital classes is an extremely needed step to ensure reaching the most outreach, and we all being valuable stakeholders, the safety, welfare of the student is equal priority, especially after this pandemic. And, and we have seen that, you know, studies have shown that online classes when started prompted students to face multi-dimensional pressures related to concept of online learning, access related issues, limited interaction, safety and security, as we also saw that cases of abuse and violence too got increased. So, and experts from education fraternity were prompted to discover the student psychosocial needs the change in the change times and they were uh, addressed also array of programs like academic advising guidance and counseling program fitness and wellness resource spiritual formation activities were roped in yet one aspect which is safety and security remains uh, relatively less focused like on the other hand it has been evident that time and again that educational outcomes which our honorable yeah, prime minister also emphasized in his deliberation have a direct link with the mental health of a learner so educational outcomes are directly linked with the mental health of a learner and feeling of safety security is very important for good mental health. So hence to make digital learning more uh, holistic with limited social interaction, students should be provided with life skills based sessions on child safety, protection, safety, security online as well as offline. So this will equip them with, you know, necessary knowledge to identify any unsafe situation or abuse, skills to act and seek help while keeping shame and guilt at bay. So I will not quote here data as we all know, you know, that if we see the statistics, it's, it's a very grave issue. And my humble suggestion to the group will be to broaden the bandwidth of the existing psychosocial support programs and programs like personal safety education, wherein age appropriate content or messages or sessions should be considered and they should be mainstream now. And PSE program is already like, it's Arpan's flagship program. 
and it is already integrated into Ayushman Bharat's program of school health and wellness. It is at the PME Vidya channels and many we are working with the state governments also. Recently, state of Chhattisgarh has adopted it and added it into the school safety government of uh, um, India's initiative uh, program to make it more comprehensive because uh, currently the school safety program is more about hardware part of the you know building related uh, disaster and all. So this adds the you know, the softer aspect of the safety security and make it more comprehensive. Similarly, state of Maharashtra has adopted the, uh, this program in the, as their child uh, safety module. And many other states are also working uh, uh, with this program. So I would also propose that as we are looking to create 200 channels, there should be few channels focusing on only different kind of life skills so that we prepare our children for the future in which they are more resilient and are able to you know, experience social emotional well-being, which ultimately will, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, will affect their educational outcomes. And in other case, life skills can be integrated into every channel. If not some dedicated channels, they can be integrated into every channel. Hence, uh, age-appropriate contents become pertinent. And for this, existing resources like which are 